Welcome to another no wonderful ready. week of Dungeons and Dungeons. Uh, last time we were here, you all finished up the uh, Siege of Neverwinter. What ended up happening was the fan or the chosen went inside uh, following Mosnell and Haru, and they captured Dazgalt Neverwinter. Uh, never remember. And outside, they reconvened. They helped heal up uh, Bologna as best they could, given her current crippled condition for her arm. And uh, Brian uh, came to the group, and they all discussed... Uh, basically, they wanted to have the Chosen present Never member to the uh, armies that lay outside the stacks. You guys went up to the wall, uh, both Ralia and... Um, who was the other one? I think it was Bologna. Both allowed for a glow behind Mosnell as they presented yep. Never Member on his knees. And the crowds roared and cheered, and the names of heroes and nicknames were given to the groups. Uh, names like the Black Death or the Coughing Plague was given to Ralia. The uh, To Ulazal was the Hand of Tear. Uh, to uh, Belfina was the uh, Thorns of the Bramblewood, was it? I believe so. Thorns of the Bramblewood, or Thorn yep. of the Bramblewood. And uh, Mosnell was Champion of the Forest, or Spirit of the Forest. Uh, a Shadow followed uh, Airy for his nickname, and uh, Bellona was Kingslayer for killing Ascot Grandier. Uh, you no, guys no, participated in a large festival of excitement. Uh, it was a celebration of sorts of after your great victory, and you got to see other people, enjoy the festivities, dance, laugh, play games, and enjoy life after winning. Uh, people got sloppy drunk and got to have fun. Ari had a moment to himself to recollect and before the next day where... Um, the group was on their way to Lancaster. Uh, they described in private the plans for attacking forward, and then in a smaller crowd with even less people, uh, with just like basically the leaders, Brian, Haru, and uh, Blackstaff, and the Chosen, and a couple of select few others, uh, described the real strategy of what was going to happen. The plan is... Uh, we gave them the mix-up. Nice yeah. Shot. The plan is to have the... Uh, Chosen march with the uh, Lin Ryu to Lancaster to try and take it peacefully. If they can't, then the siege will begin. There is a sewer system that the uh, Princess of Tendorf used frequently to discuss uh, political matters and visit political matters unseen at the Lancaster residence. The uh, fiercely uh, beloved leader of the of Lancaster is Baron Baron Ver Mysticar. He has extreme loyalty and was described to have had a uh, his people have a endless loyalty to him because he's always trying to do what's right for them. He sort of got forced into domination he got dominated by oh who left no the boxes Brian Brian oh he's the worst uh his damn Walmart internet okay anyway he knows <laughs> this he'll come back um but he sort of got forced into uh rule he didn't really have an option it was either be conquered or align himself with the cobalt wolves as Ascot was taking over while everybody was away um so your mission right now is to go and take Lancaster uh, while the Northern Armies are going to go to Exeter, uh, they're going to try and take Exeter. They're three days after, hopefully, you take Lancaster. And then they're going to try and cut off reinforcements that are going to be called down from Nature's Hold uh, to uh, aid in Tendorf to prevent a siege. The Northern Armies are going to go prevent that going up to Peterborough. And you guys are going to go uh, behind and you're going to be 
Uh, basically, it's a screenplay where the Northern Army is going to block the movements of you guys out of Lancaster and towards Tendorf, where you're actually rallying with the Southern Water Deep Army that's coming up from the capital. And on the shores right now, uh, Jaqualden and uh, Jarlax are using the coordinate to get the Navy blockade ready for Tendorf so no one can escape through the seas and they can help with the siege of Tendorf as well. If all things go well, within two weeks, Tendorf should fall. If all things go well. If all things go well. Uh... So that, I believe, is all the big information you need for uh, this week with Lancaster. Some discussion with Mosnell happened between Brian and Salem for post-war plans that were briefly discussed. But the consensus right now is the longer you give Escott, the more likely he is to be able to create a plan to strike back and then retake all of his lost territory. You can't give him time to think because eventually he'll outthink everybody. He's got right. a big brain. Big brain boy. He's like Euliris if Euliris was on speed all the time. <laughs> speed and devil contracts. Aren't those the same thing? I guess. I don't know. It's your world. I don't make this stuff up. Okay. So your group has now traveled three days and you're outside Lancaster at the moment. Uh, you're in one of the setup tents as the Northern Army has is left you guys and broken off through the Somerset Hills and is on their way to Exeter, the information from the South uh, has Fanlin has been taken by the time you guys got to Lancaster by the Lin Ryu that were departed there, about three or 4,000, ended up going to Fanlin to aid with the mages that were teleported to Fanlin and Torleaf uh, and Liliana and all them down there. So right now they have taken that stronghold and they're keeping uh, the border secure to make sure no one from Minna ends up trying to aid Tendorf. Uh, inside your uh, tent, it is Calgary and Salem that are both with you on your siege to Lancaster. The Grey Hand, about, th uh, I'd say, 30 or so, uh, are accompanying you right now while the rest of them are split between the Northern Army and the Waterdeep Armies. That are on the move. And I believe that is where I want to leave you with the smell of mud brewing from all the groups. The tents are set up. You guys are inside the hills with next to no tree cover as rain is coming down. It is gray skies for the majority of the past two days and light drizzles. It's not a downpour, but there is a coolness to the air and just to the north you guys have also informed that the frost giants and the frostborn would be trying to take nature's hold um, within the next day or two as you guys try and take Lancaster because a snowstorm is hitting up in the uh, Everwood and by nature's hold they're in the middle of a harsh winter storm that is just hitting you guys are kind of getting the uh, the tail end of that in the warmer regions further south What do you all want to do as uh, you guys are inside the tent with Salem and Calgary at this time, outside the view shot of Lancaster, uh, guide or covered by the hills right now, so they do not know of your approach? How far is it? Like a few miles or something? Yeah, yeah. It's enough that it's like an hour or two away when, once you guys get going. Um, yeah. The mission right now from Salem to you guys is to try and get in through those tunnels, try and get it peacefully if you can, and negotiate with the Baron to uh, surrender, and then nobody has to die, and you guys can be on your way, hopefully with a bloodless siege of Lancaster. What are our arguments? I don't know. You guys can formulate that yourself. I'm asking. What kind of Everyone. military presence yes. does Lancaster have? Are there a lot of Gowalts in the city? Um, Salem turns to me and goes, the Lancaster forces are made up of mainly Lancaster people, and there are a fair amount of Cobalt forces. You have about 
a thousand uh, kobolds inside, uh, garrisoning the castle in the area. But there's about 2,500 loyalist uh, Lancasters. They are more loyal to the Baron, and that's why we even think we have this opportunity. Uh, they will do as he says. They are not loyal to Escot or the Cobalt Wolves. So all we really need to do is convince the Baron to join our side. Most certainly. That's, or, or that's stay essentially neutral. the plan, is if we get in there and we can sneak in without raising raising alarm, if we make it to the Baron, we can potentially convince him or intimidate him into surrender with the least amount of bloodshed. Question. You know, I know somebody who's really good at sneaking. <laughs> uh, gameplay question. Yeah. Does anyone know if Pass Without a Trace stacks if two people cast it at the same time? Does I not. don't. I believe it does not. Thank you. That's all I wanted to know. Um, uh, do we know of a barracks or something that the Cobalt Wolves uh, hide in within the city? Uh, if they have a specific lodging or do they stay with the soldiers of the Lancasters? It is mixed lodging, so it would be difficult to, uh, as you bring the Black Death... Try not to kill the loyalists versus the kobolds, but if necessary, it is what we will do. Yeah, very well. I figured we could uh, show a little force to persuade him, but uh, I would not rather kill his own men. That would probably be against us. I don't well, agree. The, the, the idea is that these secret tunnels might be able to get us very close to the his central chambers. We may have to fight off some guards as we get deeper in but the thought is that if we can get close enough with the least amount of casualty and without starting a siege we will be able to make a move and convince them to avoid bloodshed I do like the suggestion though Vralia uh, what we had in mind potentially is we could stand ready as you infiltrate and given the message that one of you can send to us, we can light our torches to show our forces. We outnumber them 10 to 1. And if they see rows and rows of torches on the horizon appear in the night, that might be enough to intimidate the Baron to see it's a hopeless cause if we siege. All right, this is uh, always a good backup. Uh, if normal negotiations fail, just tell him, well, look outside, you have no chance. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who wants to do the talking? I mean, whoever I can speak with him, uh, it's fine. Oh boy, I can I can be pretty convincing myself. Uh, all right, both of you, try to convince me to not do something right now. Uh, what is it you wish to do? Um, hmm, I would like to shoot Ulzal in the face. Hey, I wouldn't that's appreciate it. That's a terrible that's idea. He's the one that heals us and keeps us alive. Okay. If he dies, where would you go? Hmm. Those are both convincing arguments. <laughs> <laughs> oh, see, by the way, does uh, Bologna still have a crippled arm? No. No. no you healed I, it. I healed. I used you to heal it. Yeah. Okay. That is absolutely uh, okay. You I healed do, me. <laughs> I do have regenerate. And you, yeah, also, you, did. Uh, you also met with the. Uh, the two individuals that were still uh, that you left in charge of keeping up the faith of Tear inside Neverwinter, and you guys got to bond over the night as well. Your chapel, absolutely. His name, who I I remember so so well. Yep, because we were such close friends. Yep, definitely. <laughs> well, everyone connected. who falls Tear is close, right? We're all connected. Of course, everyone knows that. All right. Um. Okay. Jeez. I guess you guys can both just talk. I don't know. <laughs> You got me. I'm good. So I put my hand on Bolana's shoulder and cast friends. <laughs> like, ah, there's nothing wrong. We can do this easily. Uh, it's a wisdom saving throw, I believe. Yeah, wisdom. Jesus. Uh, a natural 19 for 23. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you resist. <laughs> Sorry about that. Look, we decided uh, to show up. You didn't have to cast that. We're, we're I can also friends. be naturally charismatic. <laughs> <laughs> we're already friends. You didn't have to cast it. 
but we could be best friends. <laughs> <laughs> I, again, you don't have to use magic to do that. <laughs> oh, I am honored. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody has ever said that before, except for oh. some of my skeletons. My <laughs> <laughs> oh, you also, uh, Ralia, you ended up killing the Cobalt Mage with a, a Disintegrate followed by a... Um, uh, an Eldritch Blast. You had him down to six health. The wizard uh, wolf pack leader. Yeah, Wait, you wrecked him. You oh, Did god I, damn it, Ryan. Now you moved again on me, son of a bitch. His camera wasn't on. <laughs> Sorry. He's You're special. Wait, He's all me. moved in. Look at his new home. Oh my goodness. Look at yeah. that. Let's go, Ryan. Look at that. Okay, it's like back. one side you can see things, and then the other side is just like this bright light. It's just light exposure. So, <laughs> this, so it's funny. Uh, this is an attic room, so there's a a, uh, a window on on the like angle of the roof. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Skylight. Dope. How's the city? How's Burlington? I wouldn't know. <laughs> Can't really oh. go anywhere. I just <laughs> meant like, are there people? <laughs> Burning down Burlington, or is it? Oh no, chill? it's okay, super cool. chill. Cool, good to know. All right, so anyway. um, you're inside a tent about two miles outside of Lancaster. I've caught them up with everything from last session, Ryan. So you're all deciding on your plan of action to uh, to sneak in to try and convince the Baron to surrender. Right. Uh, do we have a, a pathway with these? Tunnels of the most most direct route. Have we scouted the area? Uh, yeah. As uh, Salem pulls out a map and he uh, unrolls it onto the table, he goes, uh, "This is the area you all will be taking." The Princess of Tendorf was able to draw these out for us by memory, so they may have changed some of the passageways throughout. But the general idea is it's a straight shot through a bunch of complex aqueducts and you go straight through and then there is a uh, fork in the road that will come up and you always go left in the fork in the road up until you end up seeing a symbol this will be the symbol of the lancasters which is represented uh by a uh it's a bug i can't believe i'm forgetting the name of it right now it's that good. Green blades, they bite off each other's heads. Praying mantis. Thank you. Oh my god. Um, it symbols a prey mantis. So you'll see that etched into the wallways, and then you take a right. And then you should be within the secret entrance where they meet. That will lead directly into the castle of Lancaster. About anything in those passageways? Say that again? Do we have to worry about anything in those passageways that would slow us down? The only thing that... Uh, I'd worry about is potentially the Baron's guards. He has three extremely elite swordsmen that are sworn to him to his dying breath to protect him. Uh, they are beloved and treasured heroes of Lancaster. It would be, if you have to come across them and battle them to the death, that would be difficult. Less than ideal. Yes, less than ideal. It might hurt the. Uh, the negotiations for these are uh, Lancaster is one of the few cities that really seems to be caught up in something they didn't want to be a part of. They weren't strong enough and they just are going with the flow, trying to just survive. We'll have to use alternative means. I'm sure we'll figure something. If you choose to. But that would probably be the best path for peace that we can see. Absolutely. Anything else? Oh my god. Oh, okay. I thought the camera was uh, I want to look through my homunculus's eyes just for a second. Just make sure everything's all safe in uh, the, the cave, cave that I, yep. I left it there. Yep. Um, so as you look through the eyes of the homunculus, you can see... Uh, you startle it a bit and you see it like slide down because you come on it and like it comes stiff and it's sliding down a bunch of gravel but the room is still exactly the same where all the statues were located still dim lighting inside here and it just 
seems all right at the moment. All right, sounds good. Leave it at that. What uh, what cave did you leave that in? Just out of curiosity. That's the uh, broken hill. Uh, the, oh, okay. That one. You know, with all the loot. Yeah, the end game cave. The new game plus cave. <laughs> yes, That's cave like that we were one room away from finishing, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> very close, that's for sure. You were very close. <laughs> that, that's, that was some that was like getting back at your DM somehow. I was like, we're gonna do almost everything, but we'll leave that for later. Huh? What? Hmm? Oh. <laughs> Alright then. Okay. Is there anything else you want to do before you uh, go on your quest? Uh, I don't think so, but it's time. Hmm. Alright, give me stealth checks as you guys go. Right, it's 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 How long is the journey inside the cave exactly? To inside the sewers? Yeah, like when we're in there, how long will it be? Um, it should probably take you 20 minutes to get through it. Okay. Cool. So we're not in the sewers yet. We're no, you guys are still the, in the camp about two miles out. So you guys are going to approach. Uh, it's really out of the way. So that's the good news is that you shouldn't be okay. in the line of sight of any guards. You might find patrols potentially depending on your stealth checks. But you're not like going up to the gates oh, okay. of Lancaster. This is really right. yeah, hidden in out of the sewers. Yeah. Okay. I'm passing Path Without a Trace. Okay. So with Path Without a Trace, that's a 19. And that lasts an hour, right? Yes. All right. Uh, All right. 33, by the way. Okay. 23. Okay. 35. All right. Natural 20 for 30. All Let's right. Go. All right. Pass without a trace. Yep. School. Yes, sir. It is super uh, cool. Uh, Are you using the D&D Beyond one? Yeah. Oh, it's dope, man. It's so nice. On D and D Beyond, I mean, it did give me a natural twenty, so I'm biased. It is. <laughs> I'm in. Actually, when I was rolling with Ralia, you were getting gross rolls. You were getting like 18, 19, yeah. 18, 19. I was like, all right then, I'm just straight <laughs> before you're plus ten or plus eight to hit, plus eight nine. That's right. thing is, that's how I usually roll. I roll really high and then really low. I don't <laughs> really have a lot of middle ground. <laughs> Ebbs and flows. <laughs> Literally the definition of average. <laughs> yep. Or the rule or law of averages. Mm hmm I know it's at least a 10. You're doing great, Ryan. Yeah, at no, least an 11. D&D &D, D &D Beyond is, is fighting me, so I have to use my phone. Okay. That's um, unfortunate. Yes, so 24. No, it's weird. I click on my character, and it's a white page. There's oh. nothing there. You might want to clear well, cookies and my, you might have to sign back in. Mine was taking a while to load up, too. Maybe Weird. if I just leave it long enough. Potentially, yeah. you might have to clear cookies or they might be doing maintenance. Use a different web browser. It might work. Yep, that's another good suggestion. <sighs> what? Restart your computer. <laughs> Don't do that. Destroy everything. <laughs> oh, God. Set it on fire and then pour it Install your motherboard. Yeah. Um. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so for what happened there, I called in my laptop. My laptop was like overheating for some reason. It was like hot. What? So I was like, let's not do that. So I quickly turned it off and I had to quickly put together my computer because it was not set up yet. Yeah. <laughs> so that portion I was not in the call was because I was frantically setting up my desktop. Oh, man. <laughs> Welcome to every live stream of my life. <laughs> Which I done it. I had to pull like the monitor out of the box, take the protective off. Oh, this is <laughs> that is close to my heart, Ryan. Where the fuck is my keyboard? Oh, no, this yeah. is <laughs> this is like the amount of times I would drive back to college, and then I have to set up because I drive back for like a DLC release, and it's just where is everything, and then the internet's not connecting. They're like oh. uh. It was. It got to be six o'clock. I was like, "Oh, I guess I'm calling in my laptop." And then I was like, "Well, that's not happening. It's my laptop is a thousand degrees right now." Oh, <laughs> we helpful. should. We should probably give that a break. So, the group 
travels <laughs> north of Old Owl Well, past the Somerset Hills, and they are just outside where the windmill is on Lancaster, uh, on the map, if you're trying to follow along there. Uh, and you're not moving. That was like throughout the days. You guys avoided that. The whole encampment is basically in that hill structure near Mount Hot Now. Uh, so that's where they're being uh, covered and slowly moving as far as they can with the hills without uh, scouts being able to find them and slowly going to get it into position if you guys uh, go light, uh, go guns hot, and there's not where guns don't exist in this world. Okay. Um, what you do notice is uh, a bunch of uh, sticks out of the ground and it looks like there's hundreds and hundreds of sticks just uh, sticking out of the grounds as you guys are starting to approach the aqueducts similar to like the thumbnail that you see used now uh, there's by one of the hillsides and the river that's going through this large aqueduct system that seems to be buried into one of the hillsides and it seems to wind back towards Lancaster do any of you guys go to investigate the uh, the, I, the sticks? I, I do. Yes. All right. Go ahead and make an investigation check. There's like a slight mist coming off the ground as well right now, just because like the rain has stopped and the heat has started to the hit at that perfect time. Fifteen. Fifteen. Uh, it's very similar to what you saw. What was happening in Neverwinter? Uh, these are graves. And it looks like there is a bunch of unmarked uh, graves here. And it's probably four or five hundred individuals just have all graves buried outside Lancaster. Oh, jeez. There's a... Uh, there was a somberness to Neverwinter as well, like I discussed last time, too, of, you know, the people that were fighting in defense of Neverwinter, some were happy they were liberated, others worried about their new occupa- uh, the new people occupying them. And there's been a a a push for uh, burying the dead as best they can uh, during these circumstances to Raleigh's displeasure. <laughs> <laughs> what a waste! <laughs> Tread carefully; these are all graves. Um, well, they're not going to come back to life unless Raleigh does something, right? Do you want me to? Okay. I think he's no, no, saying, no, no, no. <laughs> I think what he's saying is sh- show respect, try not to trot on anything you shouldn't. Ah, uh, okay, okay, okay. I think by far, Ralia is the polar opposite of Dell, where Dell was like, God damn it. Ralia is like, she's the best. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it. Do I love Ralia so much? I think she's like super smart, but she's super ditzy. <laughs> yeah, it's so good. <laughs> you missed it uh, last week. She was uh, somebody was so drunk she couldn't tell if they were dead or not, and she was trying to resurrect them <laughs> 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 and try and bring them back. And Bologna came to invest. Was it, I think it was funny. Bologna. It was. It was yeah. 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 And the dude was just face down in his vomit choking. It was great. He was just Whoa. staring at it. Oh, yeah, that's <laughs> what it was. Yeah, <laughs> you weren't helping him. That's right. Probably it was like uh, he he was passed out and choking on his own vomit because he was drinking too bad, you know, that classic scenario. And Raleigh was just watching him slowly die, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> deciding whether Somebody or not to help. Not another drink. <laughs> <laughs> that's so, what it was. That's dark. Wow. <laughs> it's beautiful. Um, all right. You guys enter into the aqueducts, and it's actually very clean down here. You see there is uh, clearly maintenance that is kept up inside this area uh, that is uh, keeping the water flowing and fresh, but also diverting sewage through different areas. Uh, Which way do you guys want to go? As you enter in, it is this large area. It echoes with every step inside here all stonework laid into the hillside and it looks like it's a straight shot as Salem described to you uh, from the map from the princess of Tendorf. You know, I think we should go away from this city. That seems logical, right? There's this one clear path in front of you. Mm -hmm. Harry, are you okay? I don't think that makes any sense considering our objective. I think you just go straight. You know, one one day I'm going to buy you guys census beamers. (laughs) 
<laughs> As Eri walks straight well, into the darkness. <laughs> well. <laughs> All right, give me another so stealth check as it's when taking... When he goes me. in, I'm going to cast Invisibility at 6th level and cast it on 5 people. Dope! Uh, myself, probably Maznal, Ulazal. I don't know who else specifically needs it. Who doesn't need it? Aerie. Aerie. Me. I don't so, think Whoever wants the other two, just claim them. I mean, I don't know if... You uh, may as well just take Bologna it. And yeah. I, okay. May as well. Uh, Salem's just probably fine, right? Oh, Salem's not with you guys on this one. You oh, guys he's are not going, with yeah. us. Okay. Oh, okay. It's just yeah, the, chosen. the chosen. Make things okay. Easy. So then, so we're set. Yeah. Literally everybody yeah. that's not Ari. Just not Ari. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so after after <laughs> Ari, after Ari says he's going to get us a sense of humor one day, I'm going to respond. <laughs> well. The mountain is hot now, but will it be cold later? I think it's already cold. It's there's like snow up there and whatnot. <laughs> oh, it's <laughs> you hear the crickets. <laughs> you actually hear the crickets outside the aqueducts here, somehow over the roaring water. <laughs> As oh Ari stares God. back and your passive perception, they're all invisible. You turn around, and just like <laughs> you, you like they were there, and now they're not there. Uh, I got a twenty-two on my stealth check. Yes, so give me your stealth check. Gives you advantage. What do we get? Yeah, advantage, right? Okay. Invisibility. Yeah. Do we have yeah. pass without a trace? We do. Last Whoa! For ad advantage and you, you pass had to recast a trace. It. Whoa. Because it, it took you two 26. hours to get to the aqueduct, and now you're starting it again. So you just have to cast it one more time. That's a 28. That's fine. Yeah. I'm, I'm just, so stealthy. You know. 36. Oh. <laughs> oh, man. Mine was a 26. Okay. Uh, Uzal and Belfina, what are your stealth checks? 22. Okay. Thank you. Okay. I know where Belfina is. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> I have a passive perception of 21. Let's go. As you hear Belfina bump into uh, Maz now, and you hear a little like, oh, jeez, who, who's there? <laughs> you, you get the direction of her voice, and you have a good idea of where she is now. Oh, I got a, I got a natural 20 for a 45. Oh. Ah. Excuse me. Oh. Stop. <laughs> Stop. So Aerie Ari ceases to exist. Aerie is also <laughs> invisible. <laughs> Aerie shows up in the Wild Mount campaign guide. <laughs> What's going on here? How'd I get here? Oh, what is it? The, the Oblivion? I can't remember. Chained Oblivion? Oh, man. I think I ended up in his lair somehow. Anyway. Um, yeah. Well, you guys enter the first fork in the road. Uh, there is a left and right entrance. Which way do you go? Left. Okay. You do. You guys proceed <laughs> left down. Yet another fork in the road presents itself. There's a left and a right. Um, on the right side, you can actually hear uh, a mumble of voices echoing in the right uh, aqueduct. The left one, nothing. Is there a symbol on the walls? No, nothing yet. Left. All right. You guys continue down left to yet... Another aqueduct. It looks like both are uh, have lighting on both sides of them. Which one do you take? Is there a symbol on the wall? Give me a perception check this time. When Use these uh, eyeballs, when these forks happen, or is the water just flowing both directions each time? Yeah, and it looks like okay. one is carrying sewage away, and one's carrying water towards. And you guys seem to be following the water towards. Okay. This That's one logical. is a. <clears throat> Uh, 21. 21. Inspecting the area, it does not seem like there is a symbol yet. Go quietly to the left. All right. You guys go quietly. Uh, basically in another universe, given everybody's rules right now. 
Everyone has like all their stuff rope tied close to them without any jingles or jangles or anything invisibility cloaking your steps you guys go through the areas and there's a bit of a chill inside here from it was much warmer outside now that you're in here it's uh got this uh, coolness from the movement moving of water and it's almost catches you in a trance of sorts because it's almost peaceful how quiet the moving water is as you guys are about 15 minutes in you come up to another fork in the road this time there's no lights on the left side and on the right side there's actually a bunch of people stationed right in front of the right side aqueduct they have not noticed you at this moment and you can see they're leaning against the walls. They're in uh, some armor, but it's more piecemeal armor. It doesn't look like it's uh, uh, well done. It's almost like a skeleton crew of sorts people chilling out on the right side. Uh, is there a symbol on the wall? Perception check, please. This is a fun game. <laughs> that is a... 23 23 it does look like one with that higher roll uh one of the individuals seems to be leaning on potentially the symbol hmm. um i'm gonna kind of hold the group up a little bit just kind of like raise my hand kind of make a little stop a sign they have no idea where and... you are <laughs> they have no clue and I'm going to move forward a tiny bit, take one of my ball ba bearings, and, like, throw it down the pathway. Okay. To see if I can get him to move. As you hear the clicks down, you see at least two of them jump out of their shoes, and the other one's... What was that? Behind us? And you see that one's... Ah, it's probably same old critters that get down here. I wouldn't worry about it. Ugh. There's not no word of any intruders for miles from here. You see him, oh no, I got bad feeling tonight. You know, my mom makes the greatest of quiche in all the land. And she only makes that quiche when a storm is a coming. And, ah, oh, for God's sake, you see the other one. Well, enough about your mom's cooking in your stomachs. Like, I am, I've had it to hear it with you. <laughs> and they talk back and forth. I, you, you know what? Why don't you go check out what the noise was if you're so worried about the impending doom of ourselves. We all know the North's coming for the main capital city. We're fine out here. And you mm -hmm. see him, oh. and he starts his way down, and he goes, Mama's quiche is never wrong, as he walks down uh, the right side. The other did, two, did the, yeah. Did the guy move? From he did. What, it, what Was there a symbol behind him? It, there definitely was a symbol. It's a bit dirty and it looks like rusted over a little bit. Uh, but you might be able to take the risk. To, you can't quite make it out. You'd have to go up and like brush it off to see what it is. Okay. <laughs> like you, it looks like it could be it, but maybe it's not. All right. <clears throat> oh no, he coughed and froze. Oh, thank. Oh, he's come back. Oh, no, I'm still here. Oh, good. <laughs> okay. Good. Um, let's see. <laughs> I'm gonna make my way downtown. A little, bit, a little bit closer, a little bit quietly, make a little get closer to see if how close I can get to that area. Um, awfully close. Again, off your forty-five, you are able to like <laughs> hop over the uh, water and. Uh, like the water gap way, the fresh water going towards. And you're over by the side. He's no longer quite leaning as they're both shouting down to him. Oh, did you find it yet? Huh? Is is that intruders maybe? Hey, I bet it's the Chosen themselves coming here to kill us. <laughs> as you see the other ones. It's not funny, guys. It's not funny. They took Neverwinter. Uh-huh. Um, you're basically... I'd say two feet away from the guy leaning on the wall and about the symbols about one foot away from you right now. And you're like leaning on a very short edge on this side, the middles of the aqueduct what fork in the road you're at, isn't meant to have a lot of space or to be stood on, but you're right now doing your rogue classic rogue Can thing. I just like brush it a little bit to see if there's a, give me a set of hand check. 
do it subtly. 20, 25? Easily enough. Uh, it is indeed the symbol. Okay. Um, I'm going to draw my dagger. Oh. And the one I'm next to, mm -hmm. I am going to non-lethally strike him. Okay. Roll to attack. Watch out. <laughs> with advantage so and dead. with the uh, sneak attack. Man, mm -hmm. this is the Boy, definition. This guy would actually die. This is the definition <laughs> of sneak attack. This guy takes so much damage. He's already dead. <laughs> so and that was he shows up in a, wild now. It was a um, 26 to hit. Hits. And that's going to do 31 piercing damage non-lethally. As you sneak around the corner, your hand goes over his mouth, your knife goes into his back. Non-lethally. <laughs> <laughs> you find just the right place in between the organs that matter. And you put it in there and you can just see the sheer pain knocks him unconscious immediately as you take the knife out. And you now have an unconscious body in your hands. And I'm going to quietly drop, uh, lay, lay him down. Give me a... I cast silence. Strength check. You can cast silence for sure. How big is silence? What's the range? Uh, like a 120 foot. feet range and a 20, 20 foot radius. Okay. So handy. It's, it's so a 40, handy. A 40 foot diameter orb. Well, that's what I, I'm interested in because as your, what was your role, by the way, Harry? Uh, for a strength check? Yeah. To or make sure you. As strength or athletics. Doesn't oh, it's a strength check. You're slowly putting him down, weak boy. Uh, that's a 16. Good enough. Especially helped out with the silence. But what you do notice is the other guard now that was chastising the one down the hallway. You see him going, Oh, did it He is confused now that his voice suddenly Doesn't work. cut off. <laughs> <laughs> I am going to strike him as well, non-lethally. <laughs> Go ahead and make the attack. Hey, hey, I think I found something. There seems to be so a ball bearing down here. <laughs> found it? <laughs> 21. Hits. Guys, you know this isn't funny. <laughs> that is a... <laughs> 32. Oh, Jesus. Damage. Uh, just like the last one, you put the knife inside him and twist it a little bit. Because at first he's like, Ugh! he turns around and sees you and his eyes grow wide as a knife has entered into him. And then you give a little like, what are you doing still up? And you give a little twist and you see him all like, <laughs> and then get knocked out. And give me another strength check as you lay him to the ground. It doesn't matter at this sleep point, actually. You can flop sleep. him to the ground with the silence. Um... Once those two guys are taken care of, I'm gonna drop the silence and, you know, casually walk over and spare the dying on both of them. Okay. <laughs> and I'm going to. How far is the other guy? He's like 40 or 50 feet down and he's covered in like dim light. He appears human. Definitely can't see you right now. He's just holding a no, ball bearing like an asshole fine. down that, there. I, I run 45 feet and around, so oh, I'm going to. Rint, I'm going to come at him. Not stealthy? And, uh, I mean, I technically still haven't broken my stealth if I'm moving. I well, I, bro I, I, eh, I still broke. I'll roll again for yeah, a Yeah, you'll have to roll again back. only because you're sprinting at him. So this is going to be um, uh, a 30. And this, and this without pass, without traits, because... Uh, you're running yeah. away out of range. Yep, that's a 30 without pass, without a trace. Hurts me. It hurts me. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. As you see him go like, guys, you know we talked about this as you uh, are now flanking him. <laughs> <You're> <laughs> <laughs> um, what I want to do with him is 
I want to come up and grapple over his mouth to try and silence him. Okay. Go ahead and make a, uh, we're going to make a strength contest, right? Or athle- his athletics versus your strength grapple it's contest. It's my athletics versus his athletics or acrobatics. Okay. That's a waste. Ooh. Not very good. We got That is going to be a six. That Whoa. is hilarious because he has a six as well. <laughs> so he resists, but like, but both Nothing you, changed. like you go, you go to put your hand over his mouth and you see him like, oh, and this really sad looking struggle that the rest of you can now see for the most part <laughs> between two boys that don't lift enough are like, eh, <laughs> as they're trying to, oh, what's going on? He drops the ball bearing and he turns I'm around. I'm going to pull out my dagger and I'm going to be like, don't move. Don't scream. Or, oh. I. Okay. Do you know who I am? No. You look crazy. Good. Uh, my name's Ari. I am one of the chosen. <laughs> he looks over. And, like, and you like, see him go through the chamber, like chosen, chosen, chosen. <laughs> <laughs> and, in, and instead of seeing terror in his face, you see him go. Oh, he looks over. It's like. But he's mouthing it. I knew it. I knew mom was right. As he's looking over. But you see him like trying to control and compose himself. And we just have to go that way, right? And I point kind of behind us down the pathway. For what? It, you know why we're here. Honestly, I have no idea. I'm just pretty high <laughs> on, on how right mama's quiche was tonight. All right, let's move. Let's move this way. All right, <laughs> he's giving I'll, up. I'll, absolutely I'll no kind of fight. <laughs> poke him so that he kind of goes towards back to where his companions are. As he goes back, you see him, and he's like, "Oh, Hagar!" Uh, he looks at the other one. Stolar. Not that big a deal. And then I'm gonna, <laughs> and, then I, and then I'm gonna knock him out. <laughs> All right, go ahead and make an attack roll. <laughs> that one is an 18. Hits. A lot of damage. (laughs) Oh, God. (laughs) How much is a lot? Um. Kill him. (laughs) 33 non-lethal. We will see if he has brain damage in the morning as he comes out (laughs) unconscious to the ground. Oh, no. (laughs) Start dying. <laughs> <laughs> you see the uh, three guards down here completely unconscious now. Uh, I'm gonna like make sure they're not them? like in the liquid. Just like set them up against the wall so they're not gonna drown. <laughs> yes, yeah, so right, 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 I want to try to do, like, do like a little tripod with them so they're all holding each other. <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> against the wall. Um. Yeah. This is the way we go. Well, this is the way we turn right in the forks. You're talking to invisible people. I know where Belfina is. <laughs> <That's true. laughs> Very loud. Just stomping around. <laughs> Jumping in the water the right now. This stuff is fun, guys. <laughs> um, all right, so continue moving forward down the pathway after we've Actually, I'm gonna take out some rope. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna tie the. I'm gonna tie these guys up as well. Is okay. this really necessary? You know, we don't know how long they're gonna stay unconscious. I mean, you hit them pretty hard. It's true, but they might wake up in an hour. You never know. Or they might never wake up. We'll find out. <laughs> I'm gonna should, use a bit of my. Gag them too. Not a full. Not the full amount. Maybe like. 20 feet or something, 15 feet. Can I try and make some gags? Sure. Nice. What do you have? I'm probably just going to take like a bedroll or something and just make some cloth to stuff in their sure. their mouth, their pie holes, as they call it. Quiche holes. Quiche holes, yes. 
Yeah, I'm just gonna rip up a bit yeah. of my bedroll there. Oh, oh no, I have common clothes. Tied up. Tied up. Easily bad. enough. Uh, what kind of check do you want? Uh, for a gag? Yeah. Starts and crafts, do performance. performance yeah, do a performance yeah. check. I like it. Ah, uh, fuck you guys. <laughs> <laughs> wow, 18. Get out of here. Oh, there it is. Easy. No modifier. Just straight roll. <laughs> it's, it's a gag. I mean, how do you fuck it up? <laughs> I don't know. I don't, you never know. I mean, that DC couldn't have been lower, man, but here we are. Uh, you never know. You cut off those clothes and you have a gag and you tie it around their mouths. You got you it. did it. Cool. Hooray. You did it. We Can they breathe? The city, Patrick. <laughs> All right. All right. Let's keep moving. Okay. We've solved your garden puzzle. As you guys uh, continue <laughs> uh, into the area for about another couple minutes walking through, you can see it's getting nicer and nicer. The smell is getting nicer and nicer. And you enter into what is a, um, a little larger but still compact chamber inside here you can see some crests on the walls of uh lancaster and uh, there seems to be a doorway that's open right now with three fully armored knights sitting looking to one another talking and you can see a ladder that leads up and they are uh, get everybody give me stealth checks as you enter into this room with advantage 25 uh, a measly 26. 24. Uh, 21. 28. What did... Is, what was all the stealthiest person here right now? What the hell? What pass without a trace? Yeah. Yeah, 28. Yeah, what the hell? <laughs> Belfina? Natural one. Oh boy. All right. With advantage? With add advantage? Because you're invisible. That's funny. Alright, natural 20! <laughs> <laughs> there are other numbers! Nope. That's amazing. There are no, no other numbers. <laughs> As you guys enter in, though... Myth. She um, just like jumps right into the obvious like <laughs> purview of everybody, but she's invisible, so it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> she does do that, and as Mosnell, um, you can like feel her jump out, and you go like hmm, and go to grab her instinctually, but then hold back, knowing you're all invisible. Uh, but at that motion that you do in the little bit of breath, you see one of the knights stand up, and he he starts looking around. Are these cobalt knights? Uh, give me a perception check. Mm. Yeah, I'm gonna inspect them too. Thirteen. Um, it'd be hard. 21. It'd be hard to miss their giant prey mantis sigils on their armor. They're not cobalts. Um, these might be those three fancy guards. Not saying this out loud. Yeah, but the one the one is up right now, and he goes. I thought I heard something. He looks over to him. Do you want to do your? You want to check with your visor? And you see him look at him. He's like, I think it's very necessary right now. It's like you can never be too careful. And the other one's like, you worry too much. You worry far too much. As he's as he's listening, he's like, they're all just ears right now, staring out. What are you guys doing? Like, it is dead silence in here besides a little bit of the aqueduct, and they're all alerted by one of the other knights here, and they're all just listening. It's like that T-Rex situation where you're just <laughs> sitting there not moving at all. How long does just... invisibility last, by the way, Ralia? Uh, an hour. Hmm? Ooh. All right. We'll get close. You guys got 15 minutes. <laughs> yeah. Give, give it a few minutes, you know? Yeah, 15 minutes with Pass Without a Trace and Invisibility still on. That's fine. I'll probably recast that once it runs out. All right. Uh, I'm going to let them make another set of perception checks you, against you guys' stealth checks as you, everyone's standing still. You want to play on Ryan's game? Not doing anything important. This ladder just goes directly up, right? 
Okay, yeah. So it's high. Okay. 30. Hi. Like into the ceiling up, or is there like a like an opening, like a bigger opening, or is it just like a hole in the ceiling kind of thing? Um, like looking through right now, give me a perception check to see what you can make out, because they're standing in front of it, and there's like two right. crates that they're sitting on down here. Thirteen. It's tough to see with all these people as you're trying to get a look, and you're getting a little too close. You can see, like, as you're peeking, one of the knights has taken a couple steps forward, and you see him go. I smell perfume. <laughs> As, uh, what were the other stealth checks in here? We were all we using the same ones. You, no, I need uh, new oh, stealth yeah. checks because you oh, guys new, are all standing new, still. New yeah. ones. Yeah. Okay. New Because now check. one of them heard Maz now, so now 30. they're all alert and they're now actively looking. I heard the 30 from Belfina. 26. 26. 30. Wait, what was that, Ralia? 30. 22. 22. 35. 28. 28. What was all? 30. 30. Uh, Ralia. I know who you're pointing at when you are, like, pointing at us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you um, there. That one. <laughs> That one. <laughs> Yo, in the back! In the far <laughs> back! <laughs> Your other left! Right. Um, well, one of them rolled a natural 20. Uh, oh. <laughs> so you see the other one put the visor down, and he, he goes, I think it's time we draw our swords. As I, cast, <laughs> I cast command at third level, and command them all to halt. Okay, uh, those are saving throws? Wisdom saves. Wisdom saves. <coughs> What's the, uh... DC is 18. 18. Uh, hey, Luke, is there anything that drops invisibility? Casting a spell. Cast a spell. Copy. So, Ulazal appears... Wait, 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 hold on. To oh. be clear, Raleigh is the one concentrating on invisibility. Yeah. Right. So, she hasn't cast another spell yet, so I'm still invisible. You can't, without greater yeah, invisibility... Yeah, you can't cast that without saying anything. I yeah. don't actually know how that works, but... If, oh, you, yeah. if you're I'm invisible, invisible you, I'm, I'm pretty sure you'll become visible cast. if you cast a spell. Right, but Raleigh is the one ca concentrating on the spell. Yeah, so everybody else would still be invisible but you. No, because yes. I am not the source of my own invisibility. Look, I'm looking up invisibility 5e oh. rules, boy Oh. Well, it doesn't really matter. You're right. still saying something, so it's not like... They yeah, I mean, I, I'm revealing myself, but it's fine. This was, this was just basic invisibility, correct? Yeah, it's... Six level invisibility, but it, it should just be. I think the levels just give targets. I don't think it does anything different. So, Before actually, I, technically, you would have lost the invisibility with the silence. The target. Eh. <laughs> no one noticed till just now. <laughs> for a target, okay, yeah, it's yeah. not just me. You can cast. So yeah, the spell ends for a target that attacks or casts a spell. Yeah, is the rules. Is it greater invisibility that's the other way? No, yes. probably. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Um, so, uh, with that, um, two of them save, one of them doesn't save. As one of, you said, what was your command? Halt. Halt. So one of them, you see him just sort of stand still. As one draws two blades and one has his shield and sword out, and you hear them go, Enough tricks. We know you're here. Here to cause a fight. We just want to talk to the Baron. Hmm. Give me a persuasion check. Persuasion, you say? I'm yeah. okay at that. 24. Hmm. You come cloaked in invisibility, hoping to just talk with the Baron. That seems untruthworthy. These are dangerous times. We must be cautious. Indeed, we must. As one of them seems to be taking the leader position in negotiating, uh, it's the one with the shortened shield. You see the other one backing up, and he's looking at the other one right now, and he's like, come on, snap out of it, as he's clicking onto his armor. Um, uh, 
I'm gonna enter in the room with my bow drawn at them. Sure. But just still not not firing. Okay. You enter into the sight line. You can see they're not too startled by by this, but you you see the uh, seriousness is coming over their face, their eyes darting from other calculations going through their heads right now. As the other one's closing the distance between Ulazal and him, as he looks uh, to Ulazal. So what is this business you want to give to the Baron? One of us could certainly maybe go fetch him, go deliver a message for you. We would love to talk to him in person. We wish to just ask him to join the winning side of the war. We want to get rid of your kobold problem. It's, he looks back and he to the group and then looks back to you. Okay. An interesting proposition in dire times. Uh, Lancasters don't turn don't treat turncoats kindly. It's not very honorable. Not our way. When we make a deal, we honor it. <laughs> Can you really call coercion a deal? Now that's a dance of politics. I am only a knight. And I do as I am told by our baron. <laughs> what is I that would mean? love to talk to him. Well, let it, let, let's... We'll, we'll put this in very plain terms for you. We are the Chosen. We are going to speak with the Baron. We have no quarrel with you. We know of your renown within the city. We do not wish to harm the citizens of Lancaster. We merely wish to take down the Cobalt. Make a persuasion check. By the way, that whole, how long does that whole person thing last? Or hold uh, command lasts a minute, I believe, but let me double check. Okay. You guys Probably do. running down. Oh yeah, I'm sure it is. Uh, that is a... 25. It lasts one round, so six seconds. Oh, he's, then he's fine now. Oh yeah, he's fine. Yep. But we, we're chatting. We're, yeah, we're everyone's chatting, fine. you see a little bit of like a... His breath comes back to him, and the, the two of them come closer to um, to their leader right now as the three all of you are talking. With all due respect, it is our duty to make sure no one gets to the Baron. And if it is the way of the fates tonight that you get to see the Baron, then it may have to be through our dead bodies. You can come with us if you want. To ensure that we mean him no harm. It would not be doing our job if we brought those <laughs> to the Baron <laughs> that are not invited guests. We wish no harm to you, to your Baron, or anyone. In fact, we wish to regain him control of its city. Make one I, last persuasion check. I promise you, uh, if you do not move, there will be no body left for them to come get. You can make an intimidation check? <laughs> yeah. Things were going good. 19. Let's see. 19. All right. You see one of them back down a little bit, but the other two go look and if Escott Grandiers couldn't intimidate us, you're not going to. But. Uh, with a lot of insight checks on their part and a lot of high rolls on your part. Uh, you know, my bosses can't roll this high. <laughs> Let me tell you that much. <laughs> but the minions can. The really good minions. Let us... Let one of us fetch the Baron. Discuss with him the situation. How do we know that you're not just going to go alert the guards? They are the guards. If you are the chosen, there are no one else in the city that could stop you but us. That's a fair point. He looks at the other one. Go get the Baron. Bring him here. At least tell him the situation. Keep him safe. The one nods and he goes up. Uh, Ralia, you got a better look now. It definitely is going into like a stone ceiling 
and he climbs upwards, uh, putting his shield on his back, sword sheathed, and up. The one does the the other two, the one with two swords and the one with um, sword and shield, are still looking at you guys, still weapons ready. Uh, they really haven't dropped their attention to any of you, but there's a bit of a calm in their faces as um, you all are waiting. I'm gonna like relax. I'm not. I'm gonna like stow my weapons and like put my cast and hands down sure. and like lean up against the wall. Okay, maybe so, on gin it a bit. Okay. So, do either of you have any families? <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> uh, so it might not be the best thing to say. I said I was going to. Well, I'm just wondering if they're married or have children. My gosh, this is what normal people talk about, Ralia. Uh, yes, not after you threatened to kill them, but uh, okay. I did no such thing. <laughs> you see... Uh, um, one turns to the other and he goes, there's there's uh, four others right now. And he nods and he goes, yep, uh, a beautiful wife and a child. He looks to the other guy and he goes, three pain in the ass children. Mm -hmm. So you have something worth fighting for. Where's Eri? He's still there bow drawn as far as I know. Um, okay. I was actually going to inch my way towards the ladder to see if I could get a look up it. As you do that, I'm going to put a hand on your shoulder with a feather, uh, or actually some fur from Mosnal's, uh skin in hand, and cast Enhance Ability, which will drop the, uh, the whatchamacallit, Invisibility, and grant you... Eagle's Splendor, which gives you advantage on charisma checks mm. for an hour. All right. That's the location of everybody right now. You can see just about mm. everything. The uh, Up here is the ladder through this room. Is there a chair somewhere that one of them was sitting on? Uh, it would have been crates. Uh, so I'll All use right. nice little like boxes and great crates. Yeah. I'll use some I trust there. you to do the talking, Harry. Before I become visible, I want to pull one of those crates to the side, sit on it. Yeah, I was gonna, <laughs> I was gonna go over to Raleigh and be like, um, "Can I show myself now? I, I don't think this is necessary anymore." I just like <laughs> drop it on him. Okay. Drop the invisibility on him. You appear. Oh, good. As the uh, crate slowly moves over, and one of the guards, they're not jumpy. They're not, they de there's clearly training inside here, and they're just watching as Ralia, you go and take your seat. Um, it's still invisible. Uh, Belfina is still invisible. Ari is sewn. Uh, everyone's sewn except Belfina and uh, Raleigh at this point. Mosnell, you can see these, uh, the two knights in front of you. Both uh, appear to have completely clean shaven skin. The way, like the outline of the uh, helmet, is like that of a like the the uh, arms of a prey mantis. The way, like the blades come up around the helmet, and they have uh, similar like uh, kind of like the fuzz that's there for their helmets. And it's this dark green inside there, long green uh, cloak on it underneath all the armor is tight and it looks like it's the finest armor in the entirety of the city as they are still both watching you um a little bit more relaxed but then again seeing the numbers and more people appear a little on edge yeah i'm not gonna have any weapons like in my hands i'm just super super chill you're muted justin that's weird i'm gonna keep my crossbows in hand that's strange Fucking weirdos. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm still playing around. <laughs> nope. I'm not like super trained on them, but sure, I mean, you just have them ready. I think a marksman of our caliber would be able to uh, put a put an arrow or a bolt between those uh, those helmet sight lines. I'm, I'm I'm very intently listening to hear sounds from that ladder. Okay, uh, give me a perception check. Uh, I don't want to fight these guys. They seem cool. 21. Have families. 21. Listening as best you can right now. Um, you're not hearing too much noise at the moment. Everyone has families, Zach. That's not helpful. 
You're all just sort of in this state of suspense right now as one's looking to I the just, other. I just kind of want to shoot the breeze with them, you know, okay. just like ask them about, you know, how old their kids are, if they're <laughs> doing well in school. You, know? <laughs> you can... I just want to disarm them as much as I can. <laughs> you can try. Give me a persuasion check. Okay. Actually, there's a charisma check. Just straight charisma? Yeah. Okay. That's that's uh, probably going to be okay. That's a 14. 14. Oh, for fuck's sake. Do you guys rig my dice? No. <laughs> yes. So. Like, whenever I it's in your favor, it's like... It's in your favor. That's what my dice roll. It's yes. <laughs> I do plot armor read. It's I all. It's all gonna come back one day. It's all gonna come back where none of you guys can roll for shit, and then the BBEG is just gonna be beating your faces into the ground. It's gonna be a TPK first episode of our next campaign. Oh yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> fair. <won't> say that. <laughs> that's I fair. Do. All this work I you could have put in. Uh, I do voodoo rituals before each session. To make sure that your face <laughs> roll horribly. I think I sold my souls to someone, but that sounds we'll familiar. See. Now hold on a second. <laughs> no, wait a minute. <laughs> you, you're able to talk with them, and as you're talking with them, you do get the sense of um, these—they're straight arrows. These individuals—they're—they're they're happy to answer their questions. They're not trying to hide things or jockey for politics or any nonsense like that. And they're very much about their duty. This is what they were told to do, and this is what they're going to do. Even if they know they can't accomplish it, they are going to do what is right by loyalty, by Lancaster, oh. by their family. Love these guys already. If it means going down to the Chosen, it means going down to the Chosen. Hmm. I'd like not to do that. Yeah, I don't want to kill these guys. They seem really nice. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You know, they're Eagle Scouts, I bet. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, one of the knights returns. And um, he comes down uh, without the Baron. And he looks to the other two. And he goes uh, up to one of the leaders. He whispers. And he looks back and he goes... We are to escort you to the Baron. Hmm. We advise you, if you do wish him ill will, it is our honor-bound duty to protect him. So we will have to fight you if this is the okay. path laid forward. I have no desire to fight you. I would expect nothing less. At, at him saying that, that's when I will unknock my bow and lower it. How long were they gone for? Was he gone for? Was it plus 10 minutes? Uh, yeah. All right. I would like to have taken my time, if you will let me, to use telepathic bond as a ritual casting. Yeah. For all of us. That's totally fine. You drop the invisibilities, you ritual cast uh, to link everybody's minds. I mean, that's definitely something Raleigh would do. Mm -hmm. All right. As <laughs> you guys are climbing up the guards go first one two three um what's the order marching order you guys are going in i will go first okay. i'll do with them as airy I'll goes up first uh, as you come up to the top you see one of the knights extend his hand to help bring you up because there's a bit of a <laughs> an obnoxious like lip to get up there that you have to push yourself up into i would prefer the rear okay I will take his hand. As he grabs your hand and he brings you up, um, you can feel just the f the strength in this individual as he grabs you up. Not not Haru Ryu type of strength, but we're saying this is a <laughs> fine, strong individual. He brings you up and you uh, are put on your feet inside here as uh, one is waiting to lead you guys down the doors and another is waiting by the side. Um... His weapons are put away at the moment, but just watching, making sure you guys aren't trying anything as soon as you get in, you see the uh, dark greens and the, the it's different uh, gradients of green, it seems, throughout this Lancaster castle uh, for their colorings and signets. Uh, beautiful rugs. You guys seem to be in one of the lower crypts of the uh, Lancaster castle. 
So he helps you up, and then he, he put the next one puts his arm down to grab Ulzal, and Ulzal, you take his arm. Oh, absolutely. He helps you up, and you can see these uh, individuals that were ready to fight you to the death are helping you up at the command of the Baron. And each of you uh, get inside this area, and as you all have your feeding about your feet beneath you, the leader of the three here goes, All right, please follow me. Uh, do not divert from the track uh, that I'm leading you on. It'd be best if nobody else saw this. As they're walking, the other one goes and leans in. You don't want people to panic. If we have to fight, let's at least try and do it somewhere that isn't seen. As you guys go through the halls, um, you end up... It takes about, like, five, ten-ish minutes to get toward the chambers. You see yourself going through crypts, up through a dungeon-type area, into the castle. It is awfully large, but eventually you uh, find yourselves inside a massive study instead of a throne room. Uh, as you enter into the study, the fireplace is going, and you just see, uh, like, three stories of books just lined on the walls and a massive open mosaic uh, of window in front of you. The mosaic is more on the side, so you can see out in the middle, but on the sides, it seems to have, like, the history of the Lancasters all around and etched there. And in a, uh, a wooden chair, more like a throne-looking chair, facing outwards toward the, the night, or, yeah, the night when you guys went. Um, the rain seems to have stopped. There's a little bit of the fog out in the distance, and it appears that the uh, Baron is looking out and towards the night. You can get a little bit of the shadow as the only light is from the fireplace at this point in time as you guys enter the room. The, uh, the first knight comes in and goes, Lord Baron, at your request, they are here. And you hear the, the Baron... <clears throat> Many thanks, my knight. See them to me. As he motions for you guys to come over, the other two stand uh, by, well, one stands by the door, and then the two walk with you over towards the Baron, who is uh, sitting, again, facing out toward uh, the window. As you guys come up on his right side, he stands. You can see this individual has a uh, long hair that goes down to about his shoulders. It seems uh, curled a bit toward the ends, but a bit greasy. A large beard. You can see um, like those steel gray eyes inside there. Uh, the beard is a, a deep black, but there seems to be bits of gray peeking through throughout the beard. Um, he seems not like an extremely large fellow. He's not muscle-bound. You can tell he is older, probably 50s or 60 years old. He has uh, just very plain-looking greens on right now. Uh, he's got his basically slacks. He has what would be some uh, slippers of sort on and he has like a green tunic over the top of it, a belt keeping it all together as he uh, looks to all of you. Greetings from the Lancasters. To what do I owe a visit from the Chosen? Uh, I'll take a step for a, just like a half step forward to kind of certainly indicate I'm going to talk. And again, they're we, not jumpy. Yeah, we. Well, I imagine you can guess why we are here. But our objective is to accomplish that with the least amount of death. We have a lot of respect for you and your city. And we would rather resolve this peacefully and without loss. We have known nothing but loss since this has happened many, many years ago now. What difference does it make an alliance with you or an alliance with them? What what can we do besides do besides honor our word? I have made a contract with the Cobalt Alliance. I am my people know I should honor such a contract. 
and that's fair. But a contract is typically brought with, the cho with choice. You as well as everyone else understand that Escott does not give choice. He gives you destruction or his way. That isn't choosing. That is doing the best for your people. It's not what... It, is, it wasn't your choice. I want to step forward as well and sure. say... Um, we do not ask you to sign any contract or take any contract verbally. Um, we only ask you to take back your city and fight back the menace that took it from you and your people. Uh, both of you can make independent persuasion checks. <coughs> you have advantage, Hunter. And that is... Non-natural 20. Okay. Let's go. 17. Okay. The Baron, very hard to read. Escott Grandier walked into this great land with an army as far as the horizon. He came in here, killed one of your brothers, as he points to one of the swordsmen, hung him to prove a point to us of how weak we are compared to him, to his forces, to his will. As painful as it might be to admit we were strong-armed into a contract, what assurances do we have that this life will be any better than the one we're experiencing now under the Cobalts? Well, first of all, you go back to how you were. We have no interest in what your affairs here are in Lancaster. We just ask that you don't fight us while we destroy the Cobalts. Is there other terms? You said that was your first. Do not send word to him that we are coming. It's, it's a fit, it's, all we ask is, truly, lay down your arms, don't attack us, and we will not harm the citizens of Lancaster, and do not give Escott a way to retaliate, retaliate quickly by giving him forewarning that we are coming. Our objective is to de destroy Escott. We have no quarrel with you or your people. I understand uh, there is a battalion or so of Cobalt soldiers uh, in your city. Um, I assure you we have plenty to aid uh, to remove them if necessary. I do not know uh, what your capabilities are of uh, imprisoning them or whatever, um, but we are more than welcome to aid in that. And, and to make a point in what the difference is, I'm sure Escott in his grandeur talked about how he killed part of the Chosen. Yet here they stand, pointing to Maz Nell and mm -hmm. Not only that, we have personally defeated him on two occasions. Both of you make uh, your persuasion checks again. Ooh. 17. Okay. Natural 20 for a 27. Nice. Very nice. The way that the actual die lands on it does not reflect the number that it gives. <laughs> yeah. Roll, 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 roll yeah. 14. <laughs> I was like, oh no. <laughs> ah! <laughs> My duty is to save my pe my people's lives, to enrich their lives, to make sure they live a life that is possibly full of meaning and fulfillment. Under Escott Grandia, we are walking corpses, filling the time, doing the day-to-day -day work. 
I see that, Ralia. <laughs> <laughs> Snickers a little bit. But we are honor-bound people. It runs deep into our culture and our blood. And to betray a contract or to betray our word might be a fate worse than death. To many Is your honor to your people or your honor to Escort Grandia? Uh... This is the proposition. You do not wish to throw all of your people at this menace for no reason. We do not wish you to throw your people at him. We we will go. You do not need to help us. We only wish to expunge the cobalts from your lands. Reed, before you answer that, do we we have the telepathic bond, yeah? Yeah. Yes. Alright. I'll just mention to Ari and Ralia telepathically. Uh could we get some clarification on what this contract is? Because potentially, uh, we could just ransack all the cobalts and they could just, you know, stand by and do nothing. That might not uh, harm the contract, so to speak. He was about to say something. Yeah. I... Um, what was he about to say? Give me a second. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I told totally uh, you about that. That's why I throw. said uh, that we don't want him to necessarily help us. We just want him to expunge the cobalts out of his lands. Right, right. That his honor is to his people, not to Escort Grandier. Yeah, yep, yep. Um... He was saying uh, that is the proposition, isn't it? And then I asked right, that. Right, right. Um... You just had to throw him off. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. Your words speak true, and I believe your intent. I am just stuck in a difficult position not to cast away the honor of the Lancasters for generations, to protect our people and protect what their meaning of life is. I think, we, me, I think there can uh, be a way forward with... What are the terms of this contract? Uh, is there a, such a way that you can uh, be idle and allow the cobalts to be thrown from your lands? Uh, does the contract uh, call you to action or is it only to submit? Only at summons. We are to report and let the cobalt, cobalts know of anything of importance that threatens the security and progress of the Alliance. We are to send them resources and aid and soldiers in return for protection and guidance and a spot inside the Alliance. And in what way do they send these communications? Typically they show in the form of... Uh, either by Pigeon or by Calvary. Hmm. I see. I mean, if you never got a message, you could not help them. Most and certainly. Unfortunately, you tried to send a message to them, but the enemy forces surrounded your city and intercepted it. You see him give a smirk to his face. It would appear so. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> as, Agents were shot from the sky. As he goes and he sits down and he starts writing something. He starts writing out the communications. Rolls it up. Puts his seal. Blows on it. And then you see him uh, go over to uh, uh, one of the areas and goes... To the opens the door and he goes, Grinwald. And you hear this like shuffling. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I would like you to send this to the Cobalt Tendorf in three hours from our south station, south tower. Send this out. Yes, yes, Baron. At your service. 
He hands it through and closes. It would seem I've done my task of letting the Cobalt Alliance know. It would seem a message and word will be sent from our southernmost tower by Carrier Pigeon in exactly three hours. In the dead of the night. That I was given an ultimayhem of sorts. And that we were horribly outnumbered and need reinforcements at once. Now that's what now you have done what you can. Um, we occupy this city and uh, ask you to surrender so that we can free you after. <laughs> you drive a hard bargain. <laughs> it appears we're outnumbered as he looks over to the other knights inside the room. <laughs> Don't you say? As the other one looks, he, he's just kind of, the leader looks at him and goes, Yes, Baron, it would appear they outnumber us six to four, and you're not much of a fighter. Seems like it's probably more like six to three at this point. <laughs> See the Baron? Um, I'm going to turn to Ulazal and just quietly whisper him, Can we let Salem know about the letter that's going to be coming from that south? I'm already on it. Okay. <laughs> Past sending to Salem. Uh, South Tower. Uh, pigeon message. Three hours. Uh, intercept. Uh, you hear some then, reply. That was only like seven words, so I'll also <laughs> the last 13 to try and communicate that. They're cooperating, and we're only going to take out the kobolds. They are cooperating. We are only taking out the kobolds. Yeah, you're fine. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> pretty succinct with that. <laughs> you hear uh, Salem respond, Wonderful. Will do. We <laughs> wait orders to march. Damn it, Salem. Are you going to make me cast it again? <laughs> uh, with that... You see the Baron, he turns to one the, the, the leader and he goes, I think it's time for a weapons inspection, don't you? I think we need a late night. We're worried about the northern forces coming to Lancaster in a surprise attack. I think all of our weapons need to be clean, shined, and taken care of. Especially those of the Kobolds. You see <clears throat> No, we must take good care of them, of course, yes. Absolutely, my baron. He turns towards the other one, and one of the other guys nods, and he ends up leaving the room. And the baron, as that one leaves, and he goes, Well, I most certainly cannot offer you any housing inside Lancaster. You are not welcome <laughs> here. <laughs> That's okay. We now, as, as one of our demands, uh, I would... We would certainly like to know where the Cobalts are stationed within the city so that we can understand where the, the, the forces lie. Uh, well, that would be knowledge that is, you would have to torture out of me. Isn't that right? <laughs> As he turns to his captain, that is right. That is something I could not possibly share with you, uh, the kobolds. I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna take a ball bearing and throw it at his chest. <laughs> 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 he catches it. <laughs> you see the other two, like, almost in panic look for a second, and you see him just put his hand out, and he goes, Oof. Oh. As he puts the ball bearing down on top of his table, and he goes, oh. It is... Of good will and good endurance, my dear captain, as he looks towards the knight, that your baron did not give in to such cruel <laughs> means of torture to tell them where the kobolds were located, as we both know, located inside this area and that area, as he describes <laughs> to his first in command. And, he, and his first command goes, absolutely not, my sir. I mean, it would... You... I mean... I, from the sounds of it, we should be reinforcing those areas. I, I believe that is what I'm telling you right now, Commander. That we should be reinforcing those areas <laughs> with our men 
to keep them protected at all costs because they seem to have some strange interest in them. <laughs> Give me a wisdom saving throw, Mosno. Uh oh. Okay. Um. That's not a twenty-five. It doesn't matter. Oh. Uh, <laughs> wisdom saving throw. Yes. Hang on. <laughs> a yeah. seventeen. Okay. Good to know. <laughs> so once we get all the pertinent information, okay, I'm going to cast sending again to okay. tell Salem to march on the Cobalt Holds in the city. Okay. Um, uh, he, you get the indication you should give time from your conversation. You should be surmising that they're right now uh, basically disarming. Uh, the Cobalt Wolves and some of the Lancaster forces. Well, so, I'll wait a few minutes then. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> they also they also need to tell the Lancaster forces not to attack us. Yeah. <laughs> we, 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 we have four Fine. people who know not to. We need everyone else. That's true. Word travels fast. We need we need a little bit of time. It's this like, the, oh, this is the balance of all. Well, <laughs> the Baron's like, I know not to attack you, but everyone else doesn't. Well, like, after this conversation's gone so well, you see Wolves all call the butters. <laughs> <laughs> Light the fires of war! It's like, this is the... Is it peace cleric? It's balance, not quite peace. Both sides of the coin. Alright, so you guys have some time as this is happening. It's early in the morning. Uh, you have at le you've had at least an hour discussion with the Baron inside his studies. He's actually offered... Uh, he's made way for food, and he's asked us to get food for his pardon me, the guards and that are with him, uh, a b bountiful amount of food has returned and each of the guards refused saying, lost my appetite, not interested. And it's like, oh, and the other one was <laughs> sent off and they're like, well, I guess all this food will just have to go to waste here. Oh, such a shame. Is there any quiche? <laughs> there is no <laughs> quiche. <laughs> not in this area. <laughs> um, but there are Ooh, some baked quiche. pies, some fruits inside here. It's modest food. Still... You can tell for a king, probably rationed. For even he doesn't seem to be enjoying uh, luxuries that some of the other previous kings you've seen, like in Neverwinter, especially in comparison to what Nevermember was living in. Uh, it's definitely it's way nicer than what probably the peasants live in, but it's not gaudy as shit uh, and I'm not in excess. Go, I want to go up to one of the guards and say, uh, uh, "We did unfortunately have to knock out a couple of your men uh, in the the sewer." Um, might want to go check on them. Noted. Thank you. For not killing them. <laughs> uh, you can thank, uh, Mr. Stabby Stabby over here. <laughs> thank you, Mr. Stabby Stabby. <laughs> that's, that's okay. yes, yes, that's right. I just sigh. <laughs> <laughs> As I just nibble on, like, a little pastry or something. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um... Is, is it bad? Harry, that? is there something wrong with your pastry? I'm sorry, what did you say? I said, Harry, is there something wrong with your pastry? I'm, I'm ignoring it. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> or her, I'm ignoring her. Yeah, is uh, anybody anybody else want to talk to anybody in the room? I'll wait and word goes out before Salem the Forces and all that starts happening. Well, that went well. Hmm. I mean, no, it, it really didn't. We had to take them by force, so it's quite <laughs> difficult. I, I know. I just, yeah, it was oof, crazy. You see the the Baron by the fire? Oof, indeed. As he's just looking <laughs> into the fire. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's in on it. <laughs> the time goes by, and... Um... um the torches get lit on the horizon and uh, one of the soldiers the one of the elite come back in and he goes um Baron he looks over from the fireplace yes my dear knight he goes 
we have a situation. And he goes, oh. Hmm. And he walks over and he starts whispering to the Baron. The Baron nods. He's th- they seem very well-mannered. Like, no matter what news comes to them, they seem to be in very strong control of their emotions. This is the best place. I know. <laughs> he nods. It would appear uh, things have gone well. The cleanings have been sent off, and the weapons are in the middle of a rotation. Uh, it would seem we were attacked at one of the most vulnerable. <laughs> um, but it would appear one of your friends got into the city... Or so I hope one of your friends got into the city early uh, and has forced the surrender of a of quite a few leaders of the Cobalt soldiers inside here. Were you aware of some other mission going on during this? Were we? we had multiple contingencies in order to try and assure a preferably most peaceful ending. Well, I think you put forth your most persuasive that the uh, Cobalt Barracks, the leaders uh, are captives of a Valkyrie, I have been informed. (laughs) <laughs> ah. Was she tall, it, tall with a scythe? What, did, what does this uh, Valkyrie look like? Uh... <laughs> they did describe a scythe indeed. Ah, yes. Right. This, that shouldn't be a problem then. As we yes. said, multiple contingencies. He nods and looks back to the fire. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you can see a twinge of relief that this was not someone thing, something else unrelated. <laughs> <laughs> a third party, yeah. <laughs> uh, you also now get the sense that somebody may have been watching you during your negotiations, and the Valkyrie might have been watching during all this time. For once, it wasn't us, Scott. Oh, fantastic! <laughs> I know. Right? What your DM is yes. a kind DM that goes both ways. Oh. <laughs> he giveth and he taketh, wait, depending wait. on how good your rolls. Was it Eska? No, it wasn't it, um... Mansoon. Other, Mansoon, Mansoon, Mansoon that was watching Mansoon. us. Mansoon, oh god. Ugh. And Mansoon. he's, like, in this weird, wishy-washy, like, kind of just like, I'm just gonna see how this plays out. <laughs> he's gonna see how it plays out, and then he's gonna sweep the nation. Ooh. Oh, it's gonna be bad. After he's still evil. <laughs> as yeah, the... I'm very interested. As oh my the... god. Yeah. What if Escott is trying to save us all from Mansoon? <laughs> As the well, fires are lit on the horizon, <laughs> um, the uh, forces, the Linrayu forces, are made present with the uh, Grey Hand and a few Waterdeep soldiers and Northern soldiers sprinkled throughout. The march begins, but as as the lights go and you hear the bells of war being rung and you can see the Lancaster people scrambling you see the Baron and you guys don't know at some point when you all were talking or relaxed he must have scribbled yet another letter and he goes to one of his soldiers and goes dear knight as he hands it over to one of the knights and he goes I believe this is uh, the letter of our surrender to our forces out there I think it's time we let our open our gates no men need to die on this day and you see him nod, and he leads, leaves the room. Finally, the Baron turns to all of you. <laughs> My deepest gratitude to each and every one of you. If you prevail in taking down Escott Grandia and the Cobalt Alliance, you will have an ally, ally here in Lancaster for whatever the world is afterwards. You have spared my people from bloodshed and shame and that is something the Lancasters will never forget I 
just give him a nod of my head and kind of make my way towards the door. All right. We look forward to a free Lancaster once again. As do I. And I'll head out. Okay. I'll bow and leave. Edge, you guys are guided out by the last, uh, the captain of the three knights. Um, he leads you out toward one of the uh, balconies of sort. And as you're overlooking, you guys get a, a good bird's eye view of the forces that are happening. The shouts that happen over the course of the next 20 minutes. The gates being lowered. The forces walking in and walking up toward the castle. You can actually see um, the Lin Ryu, um, uh, all mar- they, they don't have as much cavalry as the Grey Hand does, so the majority of them are all on foot. And you can see uh, the sun, which was, uh, buh, 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 buh. I have his name right here, Hitachi Lin Ryu, second son is leading the soldiers. He's the very first person in all the forces coming forward um, with all the Lin Ryu behind him. Uh, the There's no sign of Calgary or Salem. It seems like they're keeping to the shadows while some of the other Greyhand are on their horses. Uh, guard it in the middle of the piles of all the different Lin Ryu as they're coming up. And as you see um, uh, Hitachi look up to all of you with the uh, captain of the guard holding up a piece of paper with all of you guys around, you see uh, Hitachi nod and a smile, just a sm- slight one on his face as all these people are very ready for war, uh, miss their chance as a peace is brokered between the city and an occupation is granted. And that's where we can take our break so far. Excellent. Hey, everybody hey, 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 levels I have, up. I haven't eaten dinner yet. <laughs> Alright, what was that? Everyone levels up because you were able to get a Whoa. peaceful transition. <laughs> More Uh-oh. power! More power. Because we were able to peacefully acquire the city? Yes. Excellent. Good thing uh, I get absolutely nothing at level 10. <sighs> Welcome back. As you guys have taken the city peacefully at this point, um, it is up to you if you want to go see what's going down at the barracks or uh, further see what, uh, I believe it's Hitachi, has to talk with, was it Hitachi? Yeah, Hitachi, who is now talking terms with the Baron right now. I'm going to go see what the Valkyrie's doing. Okay. Yeah, I'm going with him. Yep. That sounds important. Okay. As you guys go through and you can see the, as you walk through the Lin Ryu army, they like part ways, very unsully style, and they're like presenting their shields to you on the inner side, but the outer side is still like shields out, ready to fight anybody around them. So you're, you're basically being protected as you guys walk through the streets toward the uh, barracks that are surrounded right now and you can see um, swords being gathered up into piles and the Lancaster soldiers being uh, pushed aside as prisoners of war of sorts same with Cobalt soldiers um, as one of the Lin Ryu uh, motion to let you guys in to see what's going on you enter into one of the barracks and at this point it all the beds of the barracks have all been pushed aside and you can see uh, sitting on a pile of uh, cobalt soldier armors and helmets is the Valkyrie. And you just see all <laughs> kinds of cobalt soldiers basically in their undies just surrounded right now as she has her scythe out in one hand that's right around the necks of three of the cobalt leaders on their knees. And she's just sitting right now and they're all just trying to comply with what's going on as you guys walk into the room. I see you took some initiative. Greetings, Chosen. I see negotiations went well. They did indeed. That's good to hear. You hear that? You've lost, and there's nobody to bail you out. 
Maybe you should contact Escott. Get him to come here right now. You think he'll save you? Do you think he cares for you? Someone comes over and bursts out. Oh, fuck. Wait, what was his name? Oh, I got it now. Sorry. <laughs> I forgot the title they refer to him as. Sorry. His grace would save us if he had the opportunity, but he dares understand our sacrifice at this vile evil in front of us. She looks over. Hmm. Do you know how many days you have left to live? <laughs> he sort of starts to recoil a little bit. It looks like hours to me. Hmm. You should be careful. He starts to recoil a bit as her wings give like a flutter a bit inside the room and then motion back. Hmm. They're all just looking, and she's just got this... It's not so much she's not really taking pleasure in this, but she just has utter command of the situation right now, of all the kobolds. You know, so oh. your grace has committed crimes against the gods. And you can start hearing some... <gasps> some people, like, shaking at this <laughs> inside the room. He would never... Oh, he would. And that is why I've been sent here. That's why we've killed him three times and he's not dead yet. As then some of them are now, we're so locked into the Valkyrie, they see, oh, they see him. It's him. It's him. And they start going whisper. It's the shadow. Some of them do that. <laughs> some of the other ones. There's one in particular who goes, oh, oh. And he's pointing toward Raleigh. He's just like, give me the scythe. Give me the scythe. I've heard what she does. As she comes up, she'll touch and just like the, the hands start coming out and just like right next to him and hit the wall behind him. <laughs> he he defecates himself. You see him pissing <laughs> as this is happening in his undies. And you see him, oh God! As you see the um as he tries to approach the Valkyrie to like suicide himself, the Valkyrie's like, stop, he's not wasting my time, stop it. As he's she's pushing him away with the other hands, like you'll die in due time quickly, it appears. <laughs> um and you see the other uh, leaders sort of looking to one another and they, uh, one of them turns and goes if he has betrayed the gods and the gods have betrayed us we do not make deals with monsters like you and then he goes and puts his face towards the scythe and he goes to execute himself and as he cuts himself and he starts bleeding he just continues to bleed and bleed and bleed and he's not dying but he's bleeding you see the valkyrie's head turning do you understand who i'm from who has sent me as he is gasping and he's rolling on the ground in this like pile of blood and people are starting to get a little horrified i am the left hand of the raven queen you don't get to choose when you die Death chooses when you die. And death can be cruel. As he just sits there gasping for air and pain and almost to a point of paralysis. And then eventually he stops moving. He definitely lasted way longer than was necessary. That should have happened. <laughs> Which one of you would offer your king for the good wills and the good graces of the Raven Queen? I want to cast Animate Dead on the dead guy. Yeah, go for it. <laughs> Just want him to like do like a sit up. You know, he's back up on his butt, but he just looks at them, tilt his head, get the periwinkle eyes. At this, a staring at them. A majority of the cobalt soldiers are on their knees at this point now. With that, they they are cowering, they are scared, and the other two leaders are just like wide eyed at what's going on. So they're looking towards one another, and 
You hear some shouts. We've laid down our arms. What more do you want from us? I want Escot Grandia. As I have told you, he has committed crimes. These crimes need to be paid for. If you wish for the Raven Queen to bring mercy upon you, you will give any information that will be most helpful into locating Escot Grandia to me. Most of the soldiers you can gather, they don't know. They never interact it. They hardly ever see the guy. It is but the two leaders that are, remain that seem to be the only ones that might have any indication. And the uh, Valkyrie goes, All your fates will lie in their hands. And you see the two uh, leaders. One looks at the other and one goes, and he's shaking his head and the other one's like nodding his head. And the other one goes, and he tries to put his... Uh, neck to the blade of the scythe again. She takes the scythe away and she goes and grabs him by the back and she's like, ah, I admire the strength to try and decide when your time has come. But alas, a lesson that has clearly not been learned. And as she's holding him by the back, he just starts to dissolve into dust. And then she drops, her, releases her hand as all the dust flies away of the body as a, like, low as he, disintegrate. As he dies, I want to use my reaction yep. to cast Soul Cage. Yep. And grab his soul out of the air and put it in this tiny little bird cage I have. Easy. As you do that, you hear the guy earlier that tried to kill himself that see who goes, Witch! She's a witch! And the other ones go, hey, and you see other ones. Is this surprising? <laughs> as, as, as they're going side to side, they're just like, look what dark powers stand with against us. And they're looking and just like, how could we not be the ones cast in light? And a lot of them are like res, repeating verses and a lot of the rhetoric that has been put inside the uh, cobalt forces. And they're like, what stands in front of us are angels of death and demons that seal souls. We are above the righteous. We will die in in good faith. And you see him drop dead as the Valkyrie looks at him. You will die. That is for certain. <laughs> Listen to me. I do not hold this soul internally. I only borrow it. <laughs> as a favor of the Raven Queen. Do you understand? You Can must you... understand this. Your leader has become uh, one with undeath. Uh, the Raven Queen does not smile on this. Uh, it is her domain and her domain only. Now tell me, friend, and I'll take the cage and look at it. Where is Escot Grandir? Is I would it? like you to make a persuasion check with disadvantage for all the people in the room that just watched this. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> disadvantage? Yeah. Okay, 18, 22, and then 18. Pretty good. All right. Much better than I thought. So they are scared, but some of them start, like, nodding their heads a little bit, being like, you know, Raven Queen, Death Valkyrie, they're making some points here. People dropping dead, bringing them back to life. Maybe there's something to this. Maybe this could be the next cult we join. Some nodding going around. <laughs> Some people being like, this could be progress. <laughs> um, next cult. This so, is so uh, the individual in the cage, uh, he tells you, uh, His grace can be found inside the wolf's den. I, I, I don't know if that means anything to me. Probably can, not, does right? Does that mean anything to me? You can make a history check. Both of you. Okay. Oh, Keep, like, reaching for no dice. But... <laughs> yeah. Seven. Not really ringing a bell uh, at the moment. 15. Yeah, you've never heard of shit. <laughs> All right. You're not I'll, from this uh, continent. <laughs> I'll just uh, ask a Valkyrie. So, uh, do you know where that is? I do not know 
of All right. such pet uh, names. Hey, buddy, uh, where is this wolf's den? <laughs> Inside the castle of Tendorf. That makes sense. <laughs> you see some of the other people in here being like, it does make sense. They're just agreeing with whatever the hell Raleigh got the Valkyrie you're saying. And the others are looking like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. Uh, I'll look at the Valkyrie and say, is there anything specific that you wanted to, uh, to know? I mean, he is yours to take. You see her looking. Nothing piques my interest right now. He is yours to take from this world to the next. Awesome. Uh, so, what is each one of these guys' greatest fears? <laughs> <laughs> There's only one left. Uh, leader oh, yeah. <laughs> Um And uh, open the spiders. No, <laughs> he is deathly allergic or deathly afraid of the sea. He is scared. Of what creatures lie at the depths of the ocean. You see the other guy? Oh, f come on! <laughs> I'm half naked and about to come on! As he's on his knees in front of the Valkyrie. Uh, I will say, have you seen, have you been to this wolf's den? Have you been inside of it? Or have you seen it, uh, the entrance to it at least? Only the wolf pack are allowed in. But have you seen the entrance? No. That's my fifth question. <laughs> so then does the soul go away at that point? Uh, there's one more left. Okay. Uh, Jackie, one more thing. <laughs> <laughs> I will use Eyes of the Dead. Okay. And I will name the highest point in Tendorf that I know of. That's oh. probably some tall tower or some tall guard tower or something. Sure. It just has to be a place that this humanoid has seen in life. Okay. And it creates an invisible sensor somewhere in that place. And I can look through that for 10 minutes. Certainly. Okay. Yeah. What you see is uh, a overlooking the city. It's not quite the tallest tower, but it's one of the taller towers in the city. It's facing inward toward the castle. You can see the streets of Tendorf um, are already deep in preparation for any sieges that might be coming. Uh, there are soldiers out and about, barriers erected in the streets. Uh, people are, because it's late at night where you guys are right now, early in the morning, transitioning towards, excuse me, uh, most people aren't in the streets, but you can see plentiful amount of torches. Uh, the castle is lit up, torches from guards roaming around and on the walls, and it seems like the city is definitely in prep for everything that's getting gearing up for a potential defense of Tendorf, but they aren't, I mean, they look armed to the teeth at this point, to be fair, but in the same sense... Um, it's early on in their prep. So it's like they've had years to defend and fortify the city, but they're also... It, this could get a lot worse. The prep of the city could definitely get even worse. Right. I want to make note of any specific entrenchments and any weaknesses that those entrenchments might have. Absolutely. And um, then I want to encode thoughts. Pull sure. a strand out of my head. Tie a little hair. Tie a little bow in my hair. And that's that. You hear more gasp about that when you do that again. You just see it like, <laughs> 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 you know, the guy just like, just let it's happening. Just let it happen. <laughs> and then I'll go, you know, release the soul and say, be free. Go to the Raven mm -hmm. Queen. And as it does, um, you can see the uh, Valkyrie very pleased with the exchanging of one to the other. As you are very familiar with, you you are like on this fine line where you're in the good graces of the Raven Queen and she allows you to continue, like, allows you to bring some undeath back to this world, but it's only temporary in that pursuit of life and death and the understanding mm -hmm. of its role in the universe. Um, and there's not real tension, but there's that, you know, in the back of your mind, you know if you take that step toward lichdom type of stuff where you start to try and be your own master of death and it's that quick you will start to lose the Raven Queen being on your side and and just seeing in front of you like 
ally turned enemy could be but a moment, even though you guys are agreeable where you're at. Mm -hmm. And it's just kind of a fun feeling to be like, we're on the same team. We, we, we got the same person watching over us. The Valkyrie looks down to the last one. Well, it seems like he's given all useful information to Ralia. I don't think there's much time left on your life. And you see him go, uh, there's, there's been, there's been strange noises for, for ages beneath the city. Uh, maybe that is where the entrance is hidden. You see a little bit of an eyebrow go up. Hmm. I think I see the days of your life ticking upwards. As she removes the scythe and she stands up. Come, it is time for your surrender. Each and every one of you make it an honorable one. And we'll figure out what to do with you next. And you see most of them filed out. One stands up to her and he's just like, You'll have to take it! Before he can even finish over my cold body. She just puts puts her hand on him and he just turns to dust. As she continues walking through. <laughs> um, uh Outside into the early morning, a lot of the uh, Linrayu are putting them into uh, rope. They don't have enough chain, but a lot of rope right now, uh, tying them up and marching them towards whatever uh, prisoner war holding that they can right now and trying to outfit that stuff in a less fortified position than the barracks was and try and make them more vulnerable and take them as prisoners of war as best they can. You can also tell the Linrayu not big fans of uh, prisoners of war. They are very much fight to the death. And seeing this, they're just like disgusted <laughs> by the cold <laughs> wolves. And a little bit of the Lancasters, there's a little clash of their the honor bound going back and forth. But there's a little bit of like they get that they were told to stand down, and there's like this little bit like, all right, your guy said to stand down, your guy's weak as shit, but like I see you. <laughs> Our guy would never stand down. And they're like, mm -hmm. All right. So, um, you guys can choose to return to the Baron, or you can try and seek out Salem and Calgary and whatnot, or go find sleep or whatever you guys want for the rest of the can night. Can I talk to the Valkyrie real quick? Yeah, absolutely. Let's do off. Yeah, sure. Um, you realize that the next time you, you see us, Scott, he'll be ready for you. She looks over, uh, she looks directly at you, and she goes, I believe the next time I see Escott will be the last time he breathes. As ready as he thinks he is, there's a reason why he hasn't left his tower, and he, my gaze cannot find him. Now that he knows I'm free, he will hide like a coward. His deal to have me captured was one of the first moves he made before his great progress. As long as I am free, Escott lives in fear. I believe you. And I don't doubt your skill or power for a second. But I also don't fully understand our enemy. So please be cautious. That is great wisdom that speaks beyond you years, Ulazal Luto. <laughs> Promise me this. You kill Escott Grandier one more time, and I will finish the job. We'll do our part. She releases her hand from your shoulder, and there's a twinge of, like, you didn't even notice it get there, and now that's released from you, like, ha! Because <laughs> she turns things to dust quite often with it. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah, um, I guess now we'll uh, rendezvous with captains and talk about what our next move is, right? Sure, we can do this. I'm going to make my way toward that south communications tower mm -hmm. to see if the message hasn't been sent already. Um, as you're there, and I will say easy enough to find and locate given that you guys occupy the city, the message has not been sent out yet. You still have about an hour and a half before it's supposed to be sent out. Yeah. I mean, it was attempted. I'm just going to take it, rip it to shreds, and throw it in a fire. Sure. 
They put up they put no up fight. What's that? <laughs> I said it was a valiant effort. <laughs> they put up no fight because as you like go there, you're you have Lin Ryu guards around you, and as you guys return, um, this the dawn is starting to come up and some strange uh, new order as the citizens of Lancaster awaken to see a new occupation happening throughout the night. Obviously, many of them were stern and woken up during the night, but told by the Lancaster guard to go back to bed that everything was all right. The Lancaster people uh, trusted inside the surrender and to the letter to their baron and made sure to keep the order and peace within inside the city. Uh, as you guys come to the Baron's chambers, you see uh, Calgary and Salem uh, discussing with uh, Hitachi and a bunch of Linryu that are also inside here with the Baron and a bunch of the uh, the three elite guards uh, just discussing over a table in a different room. They're no longer in the study. They are in a, uh, a more formal area inside the throne room, which is... Uh, less modest it's more imposing and you can see lined with the coats of arms all across the walls of swords and seals all with the emblem across uh, banners down from the ceilings inside here in a long green and uh, dark black like uh, embroidery around the outside of it leaning towards the uh, throne that uh, appears to be like made out of wood and oak and there's bits of stone engraved into it as well. It's a very nature-esque vibe. And he does not sit on the throne. Uh, in front of it, there has been a table that has been uh, brought in from an adjacent room. And there are chairs all about. Uh, the guards stand, but the leaders sit down discussing, each with drinks. Uh, Salem hasn't touched his. Calgary is drinking out of his. Uh, Lin Ryu has... Or not Lin... Uh, Hitachi Linryu has barely sipped his, but it has at least made the gesture of good faith as well as he has drank his. And all of them are pretty solemn in their faces, but it looks agreeable as you walk in. Well, that was about as successful as we could have hoped. Mm. You see, Sam look over. It is. It would appear. Uh, we are the victors of the night. Looks it was like. almost too easy. <laughs> oh, with rolls as high <clears throat> as that. <laughs> I'm kidding. Your persuasion checks are very good. Uh, they look to one another and... Before we... Uh, adjourn, I, I do have a request, even though we are now your prisoners uh, you, you introduced yourself you have one of the most persuasive in the group um, as airy was it there's the baron yes. talking to you yeah uh, stubby stubby man <laughs> <laughs> you have strange markings on your face Do you know anything about these strange markings? Very little. I know they've been appearing in other areas and causing ill tidings. Would you humor the, me then? Um, I need to show you something. As he stands and he motions for any of you that wants to follow to follow. So, I'm freaking interested. <coughs> I'll follow. Salem definitely gets up in Calgary. As the, you guys walk out of this room and it seems like we go, we dive deep into the castle down a, a bunch of stairways into a more dungeon crypt est area. Um, it's very dark down here. Your dark vision does well, but I mean, it seems like there's not a lot of light escaping in here. And. They start lighting up the torches, the soldiers down here, and you see the Baron go, look and he goes, This started happening maybe a year ago. We started getting strange cases of very similar markings to what you have on your face. And we have not been able to nurse these people back. As the torches are lit, you can see 
Uh, there's about 12 cages, but there's probably four people down here. And you can see some of them have markings of madness all over them. Some have not as much over them. Uh, the walls in each of the cells are all scribbled over. There's all kinds of crazy hysterical writing. Uh, the one that seems to be the most developed with the markings of madness, the Baron appoints them and goes, we tried our best to keep him healthy and alive and try to mitigate whatever sickness had come over him, but he became so belligerent that we can no longer aid him. He hasn't drinking or eaten water in nearly six months, and yet he sits there alive. I do not understand these sicknesses. I do not understand this madness that has come over their minds. But here you stand, able to show compassion and empathy, reason and logic. But you have but the same markings. I do not understand why. I do not understand the sickness that has befallen them, or if it is even the same thing that you have. But I was curious if there was something you could do or knew how to do to maybe save these people. Well, is all. Oh. Re Redolf taught you the recipe for the the elixir, correct? Um, out of character, I don't. I don't know. I believe he I'm did show sure. it to you. New music. Oh. Oh boy. New music. Oh boy. New uh, music. Oh, I I thought he did the last time when we saw when we saw him the second time, because he gave oh. us more potions and I thought he kind of briefly okay. he he kind of instructed you on how to make more. I'm pretty. Sure I was not. I wasn't there for that session, so that's why I don't remember it. Uh, I'm pretty sure he did. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, do I have the components to do that, or would I have access to the components to do that? I would say. I mean, my only thought was saying if if we can find the healers of the city for the Baron, we can instruct them on creating the elixir. Absolutely. This knowledge should be passed on. This disease has been rampant. I would say you know the recipe, and uh, it is doable, but one of the difficult ingredients of it was something he gave to you um, you need um, ground up uh, lizard folk teeth for it. That's peculiar. Um, but there's okay. uh, some more typical ingredients are stuff you would normally see in basic alchemy. So how much how much of the lizard folk teeth did he it normally takes uh, a full tooth of it, and like one of the large, like canine esque lizard folk teeth. Yeah. That we have to ground into dust to mix in. Okay. How much did he give me? Um, he probably showed you. He probably used everything he had to save him at the time. So you don't have any of that spare components. But I believe you still have like three or two of those potions left. Okay. Yeah, I have Two. one, and I gave a couple to you. Yeah, I know you used one on Eve at one point. Yes. Yeah. So I think um, you're down to two, potentially. Ari, when you took this, what did it do for you? It gave you this lucidity, correct? When I get the potion? When we were in Vandalin, you were unconscious for a significant amount of time. We were worried that we were going to lose you. And once Rudolph gave you the potion... It still took me some time to wake up, I believe, from what I've heard. I didn't wake up right away after receiving the potion. When you were out, did you have visions when 
when things started coming back, did things change? What? I guess I'm just trying to figure out what the effects are. I, I still don't fully understand what this is. I want to know what's causing this, who's doing this, if it's a another being. Just because right now it feels like we're we're just plugging a hole in a cracked dam. It's just going to give way eventually. It's hard for me to say because I think I'm in a different position from all of these people. Having met that entity in that cave we delved into, I get the sense that I'm I'm more in a position related to this en an entity similar to the Valkyrie as to the Raven Queen. I'm not a lower level, I'm not a lesser thrall, one might say, that these that affects people <coughs> this met level of madness. I think there's something different from what was set onto me. My concerns from a whole nother level, but <laughs> the one, the one that, the one, the the other that we met that was lucid, he called himself a champion, and he just he 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 seemed to view me as if I was the next. Looking at the guy who's in the cage, he's just sitting up. Is he awake? Yeah. Oh, they're all busy. Each of them seem to either be. Mumbling, writing on the walls, turning and pacing. They're they're all up and atoms, baby. Baron. Yes. Can you leave us for a bit? Yes. As <laughs> he walks up the stairs with his guards, I I just ask you do not do anything cruel to them. As he continues up the stairs. Salem and Calgary uh, are here. Mosnell? Hmm. Can you can you stand by me a moment? Okay. I wanna I wanna attempt something, but I'm not sure what the effect will be. I'll go stand next to him. Okay. Uh, I'm just, I, I don't know what this is going to do. I want to activate my visions of madness. Sure. And see what I can glean. Give me a charisma saving throw. Is that, is that, so, that, uh, so it says that occurs after I use it. Yeah, I just want to know. Okay. Yeah, you just used it. <laughs> <That's good. laughs> <Get fucked. laughs> alright all right. so this is going to be an interesting time and this is what I was expecting four oh, oh no fuck. okay Okay. Um, as you close your eyes and you reopen your eyes uh, the world around you looks drastically different uh, it's similar to a way how the Feywilds and the Shadowfell look different you seem to be looking into a much different world. The ground is cracked and you can see all sorts of uh, like running lava basically through the ground. And the individuals inside these cages, you see one of them is stepping over what wasn't once visible to you guys when you were in here, but he keeps jumping over the lava and you keep hearing him keep going like, ah, 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 as he's going back and forth over the top of it. As you look over to the, another wall, you can see um, numbers being etched into the wall, and he goes, no, 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 it's not right, it's not right. And he's trying to do some sort of, uh, like, design is actually being spiraled out of these numbers on the wall that he's counting. Some sort of, like, face. You can see these strange, like, scratchings of um, sort of like, you know, when insane people draw faces. 
Um, there's mm-hmm. a bunch of those all the way through. And then you can see another one that is just inside, uh, um, like all the way back of his cell, and he's just looking side to side. He's the oldest one. And of all three of them, each of their markings are glowing on you, uh, on them. You can see them glowing like when they glow on you, and you can see where they're hidden in places you didn't even know they were at. Um, the, one of the people isn't very well developed so there's not as much glow on him and as you go down the line to the other one there's glow all over him and you can see it's all the way into his eyes as well very similar to how far it's progressed on you but he seems to have a a different disposition as all this is happening right now um what do you do as you still uh are in control um i just want to uh see if I can lock eyes with the the one who seems to be furthest progressed and um, see he, if he recognizes me in a sense as your eyes lock you see the maddened craziness of him shaking and looking side to side and finally he meets your eye contact and you just see this (laughs) (laughs) with you. How do my... How does my party look when I view them? They seem to be almost like cast in shadow of sorts. They don't seem to be in full color like everybody else. It seems like they're part of a a different world right now. Uh, They don't appear to have... Uh, anything on them, any markings of madness, they do not seem to be uh, infected with it in any way. Or blessed, depending on how you want to call it. <laughs> um, I kind of want to go toward the small lava and kind of put my hand over it. Does it feel hot? It feels to very me? hot. Um, all right. As you put your hand down, you can see that blob, and like, as Mosnell is like fo- staying close to you, anything they're saying is like deafened out. Like Calgary and uh, Salem, you can just hear these like mumbles. You can't really hear anything they're saying wherever they are. Like, you know, they're there, you just can't hear it. Yeah. How does he look to us? Um, all of his markings are glowing right now that are visible, but I mean, he doesn't look sick. He doesn't look erratic. He just seems to be like his eyes have gone completely purple and he's glowing with his markings of madness. And he seems to have calmed during this too. a whole bunch of them. Like the one stopped jumping over back and forth and another one stopped for a second and the other one smiled when they locked eyes. So you see that like he's calmed them with whatever the hell he's doing right now. I'm going to look upwards. Okay. And is it just the wall of the, the ceiling of the chamber? As you look up, it seems like the walls are this endless blackness. And give me a perception check. Twenty-one. It appears that there are two purple eyes watching you. There you are. I literally, you, you didn't even write how long this lasts, so I have no idea. It's as long as the fucking DM wants. Maybe. <laughs> 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 Can you see me now? Staring at those, those eyes. Um, as you hear Ari say that, um, you you all kind of like, okay, he's saying something strange. Um, Ari, you black out, and the you see Ari walk over and open up the cell, 
Ha, poor Uzal. And he walks inside. Oh no! Oh, it was Hunter! That was, oh, was even worse! That was Hunter. Ah! He blacked out. He went to the <laughs> voice chat. You said man. he blacked out and then he just immediately. Disconnected. Oh, I like it. So that's I see what he did. Actually, I see what he did. Cool. He's smart. Um, he walks inside the cell, sits next to the other one, and you can see he like he leaves his bow. He drops his knife at the floor, and he he sits down next to the other one. And the other one uh, puts its arm around him, and you see this like <laughs> uh, inside the cell. What do you guys do? Uh, it's all Is there anything that we can do when he gets like this? We have the potions. Um, I, I don't think I can take this thing out. I haven't tried in a very long time. But the last time I did, it almost melted my brain. Hmm. Alright, uh, maybe we just let it ride it out? I don't know, he's not doing anything dangerous. I want to... yeah, so I, I was gonna stay next to him throughout all of this. Mm-hmm. Mosnal, if there is even a hint of violence that begins to happen, I want you to restrain the one who's not Barry, and I'll get Aerie a potion. No problem. Okay, um, so are you inside the cell with the two of them? Yeah. Okay. And I'm you at the door. Yep. You see the one and keeps leaning over into Aerie's ear and he's whispering something. You see Aerie nodding and you see the other one like <laughs> oh, 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 and he whispers in again and he comes back and he casts sleep on it. On the other what? guy. The other guy? The guy whispering. Yep. Um Is it a saving throw? No. He has to roll a hit die pool and if yeah. it beats his max HP he falls asleep. Basically, how much, how much HP does he have? Sure, go ahead and roll. Um, I have to roll. It's a few dice, so. And I'll cast it at third level just to be safe. Sure. <laughs> you think I should to sleep? I mean, it might not work still. Let's see. Ninety-eight. Did you say 98? Yeah. Holy Jesus. Well, well, it's not that I mean, much. It's not. It's really not that much. Yeah, it could 47. just be 9. 47. You see, the head knocks out. He seems to be asleep. Okay. Just let that be for a minute. Probably about 15 seconds in, you see the head come back up. And he just continues his conversation. Are they like, what are they saying? It sounds like fucking mumbo jumbo, dude. I mean, this is no words? language you've ever heard. It's a language? Okay. Maybe. I mean, these seem like the ramblings of whack jobs, wackadoos, and Harry is responding. There is a language, though, that they're speaking. Like, it seems like it's a formed language. It's not just like. You can try. <laughs> I probably. Raleigh, if you just want to write it out phonetically, we can maybe work it over later and see if there's anything there. But... Uh, Uzal, you forget yourself. I believe Ralia has ascended, and her knowledge of spells allows her I'm to do certain to things. Go ahead and cast Comprehend Languages. Yes. <laughs> As you cast the spell, it's not making any more sense. It still yeah. sounds like oh, no. garbled. <laughs> but it makes you feel better. That you know it's jarble garble. Garble garble garble! Well, that did nothing. Wait, are you, are you. Do you mean to tell me that didn't work? No. It's not even. It's not language. They just. Blah, 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 blah. Oh. Well, you that's not great. You don't get their intention. So, whatever, like, whatever you said wasn't enough to get the babblings to focus <laughs> on you. Um, hmm. you see now the Ari puts his hand out and this individual is like tracing something inside his hand well this is really weird and I think I'm just gonna let it happen 
I would like to cast Detect Thoughts on Ari. Okay, um, describe that to me. You initially learn the surface thoughts of the creature, what is most on its mind in the moment. Um, so that's just the initial thing. There's no save or anything for that. Okay. And then I can probe deeper if I want. Then there's a save for the probing deeper. Okay. As you cast a spell, you start to hear into Ares' head and start to hear his thoughts. And you hear, let's see what Ares thinks. Wait. And you start hearing your own thoughts. And you're just mm. hearing an echo chamber of your own thoughts right now. You're reading your own mind. I'm going to say in my own mind, who mm -hmm. are you? No response. I know that you can hear me. There is no doubt in my mind, as I'm sure you can tell. I'm gonna try to probe deeper into his mind. Okay. It's a wisdom save. I don't know if that's for Ari or something <laughs> else, but <laughs> things are getting juicy. I am concerned. I am in fraud. No, I don't have Athena. Ari comes Who's back to consciousness. Guy? Be back. Ari. <clears throat> you find yourself sitting down next to the individual inside the cell, his fingers in your hand, and you find yourself disarmed. Your bow is not on you. Your, so you, your sword or rapier is tossed aside along with your dagger, and you're sitting on the floor. Mosnell's right next to you, ready to jump in at any moment. And uh, Ulazal's in the doorway of the jail cells. They're all watching you sitting next to this individual. And uh, give me a wisdom saving throw, Ari. Nineteen. I think that beats uh, uh, Raleigh's modifier. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> you come back and immediately feel Raleigh of uh, uh, her like magical tendrils pushing at your mind. What's going on? I was hoping you could tell me. Uh, well, last I remember, I looked up to the sky and said, Can you hear me now? Or can you see me now? And now I'm here. Right, so whatever happened that. in between those two spots are, are nothing. Um, how's the other guy look? Um, now that Ari's out of it, you can see him just sort of looking around a little bit more, but he's still mumbling to himself. Uh, Ari, you can hear what he's mumbling at this point. And what is he mumbling? It is coming. It is coming. It is coming. It is coming. It's over and over again. Why is my stuff on the floor? You put it there. You dropped, you dropped it. it. Give me a uh, intelligence check or wisdom. Ah, uh, wisdom check. You're feeling this one out. Uh, nine. That's fucking strange. <laughs> <laughs> That's weird. Don't Eddie, go there. Um, while you were, yeah. um, while you were gone, I guess um, I tried to probe into your mind, and uh, I guess I could say your mind looks back. Um, oh yeah, that that I I probably should have warned you not to try that. I, I, no I kind of did. You, I, to be fair, mind. Raleigh, I did say it almost melted my mind. I was a bit worried. Well, I have felt no harm from it. Um, but it is certainly something interesting that I would be willing to look further into. I'm gonna go pick up my stuff. As you go up, you can only down. you see the individual like gripping at the side. You can see this like worry on his face and just like dread at you leaving as he's grabbing your uh, cloak. 
I'll just just like getting my stuff off and then I'll come back and kind of sit in front of him again. Okay. And I'll just kind of like hold his hand for a, a moment. He begins tracing on your hand as all you guys saw him doing once again on Aerie's hand. Some strange tracing formation. Does that mean anything to you, Aerie? He was doing that before as well. Can I try and kind of visualize an image from what he's tracing? Yeah, give me a perception check. 21. It's a strange shape. It definitely... Let me see. (laughs) (laughs) He seems to be going from your thumb to your pinky over and over again, the way he's tracing it. Going back and forth, kind of like those... uh, What do they call it? Newton's balls or whatever, where it's like... He's just tracing it back and forth. Newton's cradle. Newton's cradle. Newton's balls. So just, yeah. <laughs> I definitely heard it's a joke somewhere. Is Newton's balls? And that's what just just kind of like a, a crescent between my thumb and my finger. Of sorts, yeah. Interesting. Uh, Eddie, um, I might be able to put you into his mind if it will allow. Would you wish to do that? Ah. Uh. I'd be curious. Do not know what danger that poses you. But if you are willing, I am willing to try. We can... We can see what happens. I'm interested in seeing. Alright. I'm gonna cast sleep again on this guy. Yep. Um... I have to get my dice roller. I don't know why I got rid of it. Wait, did he try to cast sleep on me? No. No, the other guy. Okay. okay. Yeah, you can't be put to sleep normally because of your... 42. Yeah, Correct. I can't he's, put Elves he's to out. sleep. Alright, and then I will immediately cast a Dream. So I will put Eri, as long as Eri does not resist it. Yep. Um, I will put Eri into his dreams, and he can... I can shape the, cute cre- the creature's dreams, or just let him do whatever he's gonna do. Um, as long as he's on the same place of, place of existence. Uh, yeah, Eri goes into a trance-like state and goes into this guy's dreams, basically. What happened to the Whispers channel? I don't see it. It should still, still there. be there. It's right there. Yeah, it's uh, Aerie, at the bottom. I, yeah, I, I can't see it for some reason. Ari can also shape the environment of the dream however he wishes and create his own image. He can make himself look like anything he wants. He be, he controls the spell, basically, at this point. Okay. Right. Ari. Alright. Uh, let's go live. There we go. I'm not fixing the boxes. Nah, I'll That's fix fine. the boxes. Wait, can I go to a different scene that might be better? Well, that's old school. <laughs> we'll go. That's marginally better. Just so I don't have to redo boxes for when we go right back. Okay. All right. You dive into the mind of this individual. You find yourself in a familiar looking spotlight with darkness surrounding you on all sides. You can see the individual at the center of this light um, shaking and looking side to side uh in like minimal attire so basically just like an undergarment okay with with all my tattoos visible sure i will make i will make myself appear sitting next to him all right as you approach, he notices you, and you see him go like, ah! oh, "You should, you should probably get up. They're going to come again." What is? is those creatures? I've died a thousand deaths in here. As he keeps looking side to side, 
They rip you to pieces. The bones. The shredded bones. The shredded bones. You can see the panic in his eyes as he continues to look side to side. Well, I will help you. He looks over at you, finally looking at you for the first time. I don't, I don't know if I finally lost it, but I will take any help I can get at this point. They'll be here any moment. Are you going to stand up? Okay. And like Ralia said, I can kind of shape the dream yeah. as I wish. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna make myself in all my full battle attire. Okay. And I'm gonna outfit him in like soldier's attire. Um slowly the armors come across you, your bow comes back into your hand, and you can see this excitement from him as he looks to you and you give him this like smile of I've got your back in this. And as that happens, and he has his own uh, sword and shield in hand, you can feel how close about they're about to penetrate from the darkness into the light. And they seem to be getting closer and closer until finally you see one of those large four-prong claws <laughs> hit into the white of the light. And then another one. <laughs> and then the long triangle face comes through. <laughs> I'll crack my neck a little bit. It's like round two bitches. <laughs> All right. Um, as it starts coming closer, what do you do? Uh, I'm going to take a shot at it. Go ahead and roll for an attack. That is a 29. You pull back. Is it Kageyume or Kageyusha? Kageyume. Kageyume. As you pull it back, you release the arrow. The darkness arrow goes through, and he leans back and brings his one-handed attack down with his sword onto another one that has appeared on his side. And then, as the arrow begins to pierce into the creature, you see it fade. And you look down, and all your armor's gone, his armor's gone, and the darkness has come even closer to you. You can see the eyes above. Why don't you come here and come down here and face us yourselves? I got a bone to pick with you. As that happens, you feel the <laughs> on your neck, and uh, and you see him get bit too, and you come back awake. Ah. But the north is mostly just due to Mothmall, so that's pretty good. Well, boy, howdy, how you how y'all doing? Ah. Uh, no, no. Harry, oh, you, no. you take 65 points of psychic damage. The heck, dude? As Ari wakes up and you can see blood coming down his out of his nose and down his face. What the hell? What happened? I'll just cast a little cure wounds there on my guy. He is Probably winded sure. and sweaty. I, did I misfire or something? Yeah. Hmm. No, it worked perfectly. What happened? Uh, 14 healing. Ooh, nice. Uh, that was a fourth level, so it's really not nice. <laughs> I feel it's bad. actually horrible. Uh, can you describe worked perfectly? I was in his dream, and they're there. He, I, I saw the real man trapped in an endless cycle of death. He is constantly visited by nightmarish creatures that repeatedly tear him to shreds. What did they look? Entirely made of bones, triangular oh faces. I'm the wrong character right now. I don't like <laughs> this. Um, four legs. Sharp, sharp, serrated bones on the face and the claws. 
does this sound familiar at all? You can make a history check. I Anybody's will welcome do that. to. I, would I, will, I will get in on that, but I feel like I have a pretty good idea of what that is. Uh, dirty 20. Nice Same. Mm-hmm. Damn. Did, did Mosnell roll? Did you roll Mosnell? I'll roll just because everyone else is <laughs> six. <laughs> nice. Nope. Let's go, dude. <laughs> um, uh, what he's described, probably... you have definitely seen before. Uh, because it's who had the who had the twenty? Uh, Raleigh and I both did. Yep. You feel like you've seen this on Aries person? What he's described. Wait, what? Um. <laughs> Like a Ari, tattoo. Ari, can, can you show us some more of your tattoos, please? What? That, descri- <laughs> <laughs> that description's jogging my memory. You see all. Calgary, so I'm like, what? <laughs> guys, guys, get a room. La- ladies, please. <laughs> 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 you see Cal- Salem come over to you and he's like, you're saying they're trapped inside there. Inside their own minds? Yeah. That would, and what they're going through would definitely make any man mad. He looks over Calgary and Calgary's like, that's horrifying. Some of our experiments have been trying to crack just that, see if they were still alive and we couldn't make progress, not even the black staff. Raleigh just cracks her knuckles. <laughs> 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 I imagine it'd probably sound very familiar to Ulazal because I've already described this exact thing before. It does, but he rolled a what? I rolled a 19. 19. Oh, you rolled a 19. This is a whisper that doesn't need a call. Okay. Oh. Um... Harry, um, is it the thing that's on your coin? Yeah, it's that, that is exactly what it is. So, and I'll pull out the dark coin. And both Ralia and, uh, Bellona, you guys are like, oh yeah, that's it, that's where I've seen that shit. <laughs> <laughs> So, right. Got the it. being okay. from which you're drawing power is a being that's responsible for keeping these people and all who are afflicted by its madness in an endless cycle of torture. That sounds kind of judgy there, to your guy. Calgary <laughs> 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 bursts out I'm sorry, did, very close did, I, did I say something that was incorrect, factually? <laughs> no, it was right. It just, I don't know. You had like a toot about you. I am just not a fan of demons. <laughs> Look, we can agree on that. I, I don't necessarily think this is a demon. What would it be? That's also good. See, it's so it's a, fine. There's nothing has, to worry it about. Has, it has never exuded a fiendish nature from what I've gathered. Would you consider its nature to be chaotic? Most definitely. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Every, everything it does has been chaotic in nature. Uzo, we don't deity shame around here. <laughs> Dude, Calgary is like laughing his ass off, and Salem's like, "Get yourself together." And Calgary is like, "I, I mean, this is. I gotta make light of this. This is crazy." <laughs> well, it's called the madness, so yeah. But with that experiment, that actually gives me a very interesting theory towards Eve. Uh, whatever do you mean? Well, what if we give her the elixir and then enter the dream? Uh, we as in who? Just you? Because you have I mean, some sort of madness abilities that we're unaware of? I, I don't know. I mean, me, of course, but possibly others because maybe if we 
utilizing the potion tips the favor to the consumer in trying to break the cycle. I don't see how we could all get into a dream. Uh, it, it is not that difficult to uh, concentrate on. I can do multiple, multiple oh, at once. Oh, also, um, it was quick. Remember, like, 15 seconds to put the guy to sleep before he woke up again? So it was 15 yeah. seconds in your time. Airy, it felt like probably a half an hour went by in, in yeah. where you were. It definitely seemed a lot longer in your time. Yeah. Do we want to test that? Not right now. <laughs> Feeling the, the fatigue setting in. Promise. Do we know where Eva is right now? Yeah, she is... Uh, She's in, in the frozen fortress. Yeah, inside the frozen fortress. There. Okay. I can bring us there at will. Uh, if we want to go. You see, Salem looks like we do have a few days before we're on the move again. Calgary looks and is like, I can run things here as need be. Prep for when you, if you come back. Can be well, back we, ju we just need a way to reconnect. We need a yeah. way to come back quickly. Come I can back. come back. I can go either way. Did really? someone learn I teleport? You... I did learn teleport. <laughs> <laughs> Some of the most powerful beings in all of Xenia now. Ooh. I, I mean, it's... I can do it twice per day. <laughs> hmm. Okay. My level spell slot. Though. Yeah. I mean, I am going to find some clerics. I'm going to give them the formula for the potion. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> some other clerics. <laughs> you, yeah, I guess not me. <laughs> do, do you want to know? I could have told you this whole time. This is I the first time I've expressed interest. I didn't even know there was an elixir. There's an elixir. Would you like to know about it? <laughs> yes, why thank you, Ulazal. I appreciate the offer. <laughs> Come with me, let's go find some clerics. Alright, All right. so you're able to teach these clerics that you gather up the basis of the elixir and what they need. Obviously there's a clear lacking of the lizard tooth teeth and maybe you can try and gather them from the frozen fortress. If you do take that trip and maybe bring them back, you might be able to create some. <laughs> I need volunteers! I need some teeth! <laughs> With that said... They're also lizard folk. They might lose teeth naturally. That's fair. Like alligator. That's true. Um, or one of them we just have to sacrifice and, you know, <laughs> just, just... Yeah! Give me your teeth! <laughs> Jesus, guys. Um, so... Anything else you want to do before you peer off to go review with clerics while you're inside here? Any other ones you want to talk to? Anything you want to do? Anything you want to talk of Calgary and Salem? Whatever's in here. Both of them, like Salem's very much giving the indication of you, know, you guys can find any information that is good. That is something that we should try and get as much information as possible about. If, um, if it's not at the cost of risking your lives or anything dangerous like that, then it is fine by me. Oh, yeah. So, I never really explained it. So what I did... When this all kind of started, I I did acquire I I I I was shared knowledge of a new ability, and it let me peer into what almost like a different realm, and it's what these people see, and it is incredibly real to them. It's almost a world of shadow with rivers of lava and blandness. Mm. Like that one, and I, I point to the one that's hopping mm. back and forth. Yep. He, he, is, he is quite literally jumping over a river, a stream of lava in his mind. And that one, he pointing to the one that was drawing the symbols. He's making some sort of design with numbers. Not 
not quite clear what it was. It was just a spiraling design, almost like he was creating an image, but I couldn't picture exactly what it was. And then the... The mysterious one itself is peering down at all times from above. Of all of the people that are in here right now, who yeah. is the most lucid? It would seem to be the oldest, the, the one that's had the most, the longest markings of madness that hasn't eaten in six months, the one that was drawing symbols on um, Ares' hand. If I go over, I say, hello, do you have a name? Does well, he... You hear him repeating, it is coming. What is coming? It is coming. When is it coming? It is coming. I... I want to help, but I'm not sure what I can do. Ah. I am hesitant. Last time I tried something, it didn't end well for me. Let's see what you're gonna try! <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Raleigh tries okay. some bullshit and nothing happens to her. Yeah, let's, let's, let's get ready. Gonna die. Before you do something, uh... Nothing happened to me, but just in case, I'm going to put my hand on him and cast protection from good and evil. Evil okay. and good, actually. Okay. I'll cast death ward on him. Okay. Thank you. Ulazal, <laughs> 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 for as much trouble as I give you, we need you. The world needs you. Can't let you go down like that. That's just a horrible end to your story. That's true. Uh, I'm going to reach into my water skin yep. and make my hand wet with holy water. Yep. I'm going to crack my knuckles Yep. and I'm going to drive my hand onto this guy's head and cast Dispel Evil and Good. Okay. Uh, shimmering energy surrounds and protects from fey undead creatures originating from beyond the material plane for the duration. All of those types of creatures have disadvantage on attacks against me. Uh, I can use these functions with it. I can break enchantments, uh, which is basically like uh, something that's charmed or frightened or possessed. Mm -hmm. uh, it gets kicked out uh, if it fails the save. Or um, I can try and dismiss it, which I can try and drive it back to its home plane, like a banishment. Okay. So I'm going to try and break enchantment here okay. to try and end a possession, so that's a charisma save. There is no possession happening right now. Can I try and dismiss? You can try. I'm going to try and dismiss it. It's As you feel tears energy throughout your body, and you have your hand on him at this moment, you just continue to hear him say, It is coming. You do not feel anything particularly evil or good. So it's not celestial, elemental, fey, fiend, or undead. Not that you can tell. I'm going to look into his eyes. And I'm going to say, I am going to find you. Okay. And I hope that when I do, that we're ready. Because you scare me. And all you hear, as you're like holding him still and you're looking in his eyes, you can just, he's like, he's no longer rocking and you're like holding, looking into him. You just keep hearing his voice going, It is coming. It is coming. It is coming. 
Well, that was um, informational at the least. Thank you all for protection. I really appreciate it. But it appears that uh, what we're dealing with is more ambiguous than the current confines of our knowledge. We're not going to be able to be much help here. Let's leave. Right. Salem, this isn't like any ship we've ever seen before. I'll just tell him all of the information that I learned from that spell, from that attempt to okay. exercise him. And you, you see Salem say, we've experienced similar stuff, not to the capability that you have, but you've reaffirmed a lot of our beliefs. We've had these this madness uh, infliction pick up. Uh, your counterparts, our champions of Waterdeep, they picked up a few of them when we defended Waterdeep against uh, the Kobold attack. And we've had occasional cases of maddened litter- lizard folk pop up here and there. Uh, we've been dealing with that as best we can, and it is something we don't understand at all. Seems to be a lot of that going around. It's very frustrating. Deeper and deeper questions. I worry if this was some tool used, maybe a counter to some of the horrible devices of war we've created. As he looks over to Calgary and you see Calgary give him this look of war's war. No. This is no. this is something entirely different. This is the, the the sense I've gotten? I think this is there's more to this story, but it sounds in the brief interaction I had with Escott the first time. He made it sound like this entire war, his entire plan to take over everything was in fear of the coming madness. I think this is something that is ancient and waking up. Couldn't have happened at a better time. Plague to be cast upon all of us? And Calgary looks and says, Escott did say those things. He was, in a matter of words, worried about the madness in the world. Taken literally, he would definitely mean the madness that we're experiencing. Figuratively, he could have meant the people around us, the laws he doesn't agree with, the order of the world, whatever rhetoric he meant. Based on the knowledge... And the way he spoke to me discussing this, I do truly believe he meant it in the literal sense. I think the madness is something that will need to be addressed. I believe Ari on this one. And you know, we've we've heard our rumors, we've heard our share of worries. It's all nods. I look deeply concerned. We're going to win this war. And when we do, I'm sure we won't have too much time until we have to deal with the next thing. That might be so. Escott might want to try and bring order to the world, but the world needs balance. And where there's a great desire for order, but surely a great desire for chaos to balance it out, so I... Maybe this is it. Maybe by quelling one, we could quell the other, but I don't think we'll be so lucky. Let's not give up on our optimism just yet, but this is something that we will consider. We all should be vigilant for. I think the blessing out of all this is now we are we are going to be more prepared than ever. As Salem looks over to Calgary and Calvary nods. There is no chance while I'm still alive that I'm going to let 
our world be unprepared. We experienced a Warleth, and we were unprepared. While we were gone, Escott tried to take the world, and we were unprepared. We will be prepared for whatever this might mean. Okay. So, do you guys, in the early morning, the dawn has risen at this point. Uh, do you guys want to leave? You can take your long rest and then teleport to the frozen fortress if you so choose. Up to you what you want to do. With the, you have three days as the... Uh, three days before the... Excuse me. North attacks Exeter, and one day after that, excuse me, before the march on Tendorf begins. So we've got three days? Yeah. Does everybody agree that we want to go to uh, Winter's Fortress? Or the Frozen, Frozen Fortress, Fortress excuse yeah. me. Um, do we want to head there and see if we can help Eve. Because if we can save Eve, she can bring back Shamir. I know that means a great deal to our allies. Who's Shamir? He um, fell when we tried to, when we um, were fighting Orla. He was Raleigh, have you heard of this guy called Shamir? No, I don't. Uh, if he fell, why didn't he stand up? He got turned into dust. <laughs> he sees Salem and he's like, he was an excellent friend and a courageous warrior. It sounds like somebody we want on our side then. Most certainly. Right. Yes, yeah, definitely. You see him look over to Calgary. Someone of extreme importance as he looks over. He did some incredible smithmanship at the, uh, I believe your enchanted forge in Fandlin. He knows how to operate a magical forge? It would appear so. Or appeared so. Dang. It was quite a feat. From what I was told. His comrade is the one that's there currently. Helping them create more magical items. Goes by the name Very of Ipso. Cool. We did hear of that man, didn't we? I believe so. So it seems we're decided? I don't see any reason why not to. We'll go back yeah. to the frozen fortress and see if we can do something brave. Mazma, yeah. what do you say? So we can either go to the frozen fortress and what was the other option? Wait three days. Yeah, that is the option. Prepare, rest, get supplies, whatever you can. Mm. Before oh. you go march on Tendorf. Do you think the trip to the frozen forest will be long? Uh, Raleigh ah. is teleporting. Yes, but I'm talking about how long they're going to be there. Gotcha, okay. I mean... Maybe a day? Yeah, it's... I mean, we. I'd like to have us rest for some time before attempting what I, I, I'm thinking of. Hmm. I mean, I don't see why not. But to sit up then. Yeah. So is, um, is it the morning now? It's the next. Yeah, day. you guys can take your uh, long rest, and then it can be yeah. uh, probably evening at this point because you guys oh, were into the dawn uh, talking to the madness individuals. Well, yeah. um, when we are ready. Us. I'm ready. ready. 
All right. Is Salem going to come with I'm us? I'm ready. Um, uh, stepped it. That time. No, we are going a little longer tonight because we're having good. We're in good shit right now. Hard stop at ten thirty. Sure. Okay. Sure. This is good shit. All right. Um. Can Can you bring Salem without any problem? Eight people. Eight people. Yeah. Um. Oh, you one. see Salem. Look. He goes. Six. I think Calgary should go. I gotta make sure everything runs as smoothly as possible here. But I would love to see it in person, but I gotta make sure everything stays organized. Thankfully, uh, we have somebody that, I that I trust with all my being and knowledge that is quite capable and seems to run with you guys quite often. Calgary, you've seen quite a bit, especially since I've been gone. Please keep an eye on them and let me know what happens. You see Calgary nod. And he's like, I guess I'm with my favorite people again. <laughs> oh. Well, know. we did save your life. I think I owe my life to each and every one of you. Quite a debt. You owe me nothing. Hmm. Oh, guess debt's paid then. Guess we're just going as friends. <laughs> <laughs> Salem, when we wish to return, um, I will have to... Uh, Spy in on you um, from a distance. Do not resist it. This will be me. Oh. <laughs> we'll send a message beforehand so you know that it's us. Yes, that'll allow me to remove one of the items I'm attuned to. Very <laughs> good. Uh, speaking of which, Ulazol, um, can you contact somebody um, that we uh, that we know in the Frozen Fortress to let them know that we are coming? That is a good idea. Who do we know in the Frozen Fortress right now? Fair amount of people. Um, Zary Clovis. That's... Yeah. Zary Clovis definitely Sorry. works for me. Zary Clovis, I think. All right. Is there a better person oh. than that? No, that's perfect for me. Okay, cool. Great. I will cast Sending to Zary Clovis and say, Sorry, it is us, the Chosen. We are heading okay. to the Frozen Fortress. Yeah, they're not to resist. Uh, Raleigh is crying. Do not resist. We'll be there shortly. Oh. <laughs> As you scry. Right at, yeah, I'm going to cast scry and I'm going to cast teleport. Yep. So you teleport so right next to the location. <laughs> no issue with teleporting. They're in the middle of eating dinner as you guys poof, <laughs> right next to, <laughs> to Sari. Mace is there with uh, uh, Con Concave, what's her name? Uh, Vicia Concave. And uh, a bunch of the other nobles are, are there as well. You can actually see Lin Ryu sitting with them inside the frozen fortress. And uh, you see her... <laughs> <laughs> oh, like she's just finishing the O as you guys get there, and she's like, That was quicker than I thought. I appreciate it, sorry. <laughs> Not a problem, not probably, yeah. You see May's like, can, can you guys just do that whenever? Yeah, a couple times no. a day, whenever I want, yeah. That's <laughs> insane. And you see Visha being like... This is why they are chosen. We are <laughs> saved. <laughs> well, uh, sorry to interrupt your dinner. We'll get off your table now. <laughs> that would be appreciated. As you do notice, half of you are on the table and half of you aren't on the table. And you can see Calgary, like, his foot is in, like, half a soup. And he's like, oh, excuse me. As he, gets, <laughs> <laughs> he gets off the table and you guys climb down, like, your weapons clanking and shit. Oh, I was like, well, I suppose I didn't have to rush it that much, but I was just so excited I haven't done it. I'm and really you see Siri you grab your hand and she's fast. like, I understand it is wonderful to see you. Whatever you're doing right now, it is of the most importance, but if you have some time, I'd love to catch up with you. I would like that very much, uh, but we should get to our uh, business. So you guys start to... Uh, have a nice dinner. <laughs> yeah. As you Whatever's left of it. 
walk out. <laughs> you guys um, are inside the frozen fortress. A bit familiar with the layout, the uh, Lin Ryu that were there guarding everybody inside there knew you were friendly immediately, recognized who you were, and some of them are helping you as you ask for Eve. Uh, as you're asking for Eve, you uh, can see uh, cheering going on. One of the the smaller leader that you remember that is leader of the Frostborn, uh, you can hear their voice echoing in that big chamber where all the disseminating was happening. Do you guys want to check out what that's about? You have piqued my interest. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Thanks, Beak. We've got a, we've got a few days. To As you guys out. open it up, you can hear the uh, short-statured woman and all these cheering and roaring is going on inside there. Um, you can actually see uh, the mystic from the, the lizard folk. Mystic is actually still inside here. And he's even like ringing something around in circles above his head. You can see um, all sorts of civilian drow inside here. You see the men, women, and children that were mm, that left all the north that has been evacuated as refugees that they were holding here. Um, not all of them, obviously, but like the place is packed with a bunch of them. Probably, you know, 20,000 or so inside this area. It's huge. It is slammed. Nobody can hardly move as you guys barely get the doors open and people are cheering. What do you do? What are they talking about? You could ask them. Yeah. I kind of try to inch my way through the crowd to see what the heck are they looking at. Um. Okay. Uh, do, do you ask or whatever? Yeah. What's going on? You see the other person look to you. There's a woman. Uh, she grabs your face and she just kisses you. This drow woman right on the lips as uh, people are cheering. Um, nice. Airy, as you start pushing through the crowd, you can hear... Uh, the leader of the Frostborn, the co-leader of the Frostborn, again, she raises her voice this time. You guys get with the door open now, hear a little more. Nature's hold has fallen to the Frostborn. Again, it is of the north. The ice, the ice giants, and you can hear cheers go up. The lizard folk, and you can hear, see again, the mage going around. Get excited. The Frostborn. People cheering as well. Lin Ryu. As people cheer. And we must most notably cheer on the champions from Yin Yang. The Knights of Tia. And you see these people just cheer again. Their bravery led us to victory today. The North is once again ours as the kobolds retreat back to the south and cheers erupt. Hmm. This, uh, this is conflicting information? I don't know. Is Why it? don't you give a history check? Uh, okay. History? Well, that's a whopping ten. You can make a religion check. Maybe check with your religion. god. Religion. You can do any of that. If you're interested in my religion's not not great i know you're garbage <laughs> it's a 15. that's pretty good do you have that commune uh i do and i totally would have prepared it today right <laughs> sure, I don't care. yeah commune is always prepared so yes well you could try to take a moment to uh uh, away from the crowd to try and commune with Tyr to see what the fuck that's about if that's conflicting information. Right. I will do that. I will uh, find some space and I'll light up a joint and uh, ask my god some questions. Go for it. Yeah, uh, man. Like, what? <laughs> you like you push your way back in you're all happy to hear this and then you see Will's all like coming in here and getting fucking high as a kite. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so I, I uh, set the scales out, light the incense, put out the water. Um, were these... Were the ones who took back nature's hold... 
on our side. You feel the warmth of a yes. Do we know them? You feel the warmth of a yes. Uh. Can we trust them? You feel a strong warmth of a yes. Well, that's good enough for me. <laughs> <laughs> I believe we knew the i the the ice giants and this and the um, frostborn were going down to retake it, right? Yeah, right, but I, I want to know about the Knights of Tear. They sound pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, I am interested. I feel like, to... Yeah, I don't. Re I don't recall hearing about these people. Yeah, yeah I just gonna start asking around. Either. I am going to ask around. All right, as the crowds disperse a bit, and go give me a uh, uh, a persuasion check, a charisma check, as you're like, as well as all the cleric of tear, like, what is this about? <laughs> you're going to people. That is eleven. 11. Okay. Um, it takes you like three or four people of uh, like still people cheering and shaking you and stuff like that, not answering your question, ignoring you. And eventually, hey, hey, pay attention. <laughs> eventually, you find um, a drow uh, female with her child that you inquire about, and they seem to be off to the side. Um, she's holding her baby in hand right now, trying to settle it down. And as you come over uh, and like, trying to understand the whirlwind around you, uh, you lean over and ask her about it. I know most of these people, but I've, to my knowledge, not heard of the Knights of Tear. Who are they? She's looking down at her baby. You haven't heard about the Knights of Tear? Man, the war is vast. It's the... And she's not looking up as she's holding the baby. As you can tell, the baby's like her full focus because it's like on the verge of like, I'm gonna lose it! And she's like, no, 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 it's fine. And the baby's like, no! Oh, I love mom. Oh, but I'm gonna lose it and start screaming. Uh, so she's right there. Um, they are uh, a group, uh, a mix of deserted cobalt wolves and the soldiers that fought at Yin Yang. Did you not hear about the miracle of Tyr? I mean, one of his disciples inspired these knights. I, I, I'd never heard of it, no. Yes. They have been, from the few teachings he gave them, they have been inspired, and it appears Tear guides them. <laughs> That's wonderful news. But mere That's... mortals taking nature's hold under Tear's balance. It's amazing what he can do. It's something else. No, no, honey. Look at me. Look <laughs> at me. Well, I'll, uh, tap her on the shoulder and give her guidance to help her with her uh, mothering needs <laughs> and then I'll leave. You see it, it helps. The baby starts to fall asleep. Yes, let's go. <laughs> I want to find these guys because I'm so proud. I'm sure they want to meet you again. Where are they? Let me find them. <laughs> They're at nature's old bitch. <laughs> I'm looking for them. <laughs> I'm asking. You're where in a frozen are they? fortress. They're in nature's hold. Ah, oh, damn it! That's too far away. <laughs> That's mm, very only far three away. Days. Man. <laughs> <laughs> All uh. right. Then, uh, returning from this, you guys can go uh, find Eve with the healers at this point. Kane is not yeah. present. Kane was fighting at Nature's Hold. Yep, yeah, I imagine he was. Let's find some lizard folk and Eve. All right, you find Eve easy enough. The uh, Mystic is actually shows up halfway through as there's a couple lizard folk with the Northern clerics here, and you see the Mystic like hobbling over. He's got uh, his his big Rafiki like staff as he comes in, and he's just like. I heard you are back. And you, you hear oh, this no. in really broken common, but he's a quick, quick learner. Yeah. yeah, we 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 have a we have a theory. Oh, 
We want to try something to see if we can wake Eve up. Tried you might. She's like a sleeping rock. And he starts bashing Eeg with his, with his Rafiki staff. <laughs> oh, I got lazy. You are lazy. We are dying out here. And you just see Eve's body getting smacked by this staff. Please stop. <laughs> Good um, for nothing. Question. Uh, how do your teeth work? You see him take two <laughs> steps back. Ari, I have some. We don't need to. Oh, wait, you have actually. Oh, okay. no, you don't I, have I any have... teeth. No, you don't. You have no I, teeth. I still have a few potions. You do have the potions. Oh. Yes. Yeah. But you see him. Lizards are teeth. teeth. They are sought after alchemical items. Very rare. Much rarer than those stupid stones you picked up. I can. I guess what Ari is trying to ask. I just ask if, if they're taken, do they grow back? Mm, I don't know. I I should say more accurately, if they're given or they fall out. (laughs) Oh, do they they fall out? You see him grip his uh, Rafiki staff and whack a lizard folk in the mouth next to him, (laughs) and you just see, see like, oh, oh, he's like, ah, ah," and he takes and he rips one out. You see, like, oh. Oh, as he goes to the ground and you see see him go into his pouch and he brings something out he's like and it goes on him he's like oh oh he's like yes yes you're something a little bitch and you see him has the tooth and you see mm, they do come back but it takes time something like this would take mm, months to come back oh months oh that's okay you see him put it in another pouch you see him like mm, I needed that, thank you. And you see him like, oh, oh, oh. He, he's like high as a kite right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, um. Anyways, back to our plan. Yes, yes. <laughs> as it turns out, um, your folks' teeth may be a critical component to the elixir we're using. And we're certainly not going to walk around ripping people's teeth out. But uh, if there are any people who would voluntarily give some, so that way we can start giving this cure out more frequently and hopefully helping some people who have been afflicted, that would be extremely helpful. This is a reasonable proposition. It is considered. Let's see if it works. Good idea. Uh, I'll administer like Eve has already had a dose of the potion but I'm going to give her a fresh dose sure. just in case there's any kind of time limitation restriction or anything like that sure. I'm just going to give her some more I don't see how it can hurt so sure. fresh dose so I only have one dose of potion left Yep. and then alright Ralia how many of us can you send in that's a good question um she is already. No, <laughs> he's already in. Uh, right now four. If she's already asleep, she is already asleep. Yeah. Hopefully, Hunter joins. Already asleep. Uh, the oh, the oh. screen's just frozen, but I can still hear all of you. Oh, good, he's back. <laughs> I can do four at at this moment. You okay. were you were in the last person. Um, do you who do you think is best suited for the job? Uh, Maznal. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. <laughs> Maznal will be very helpful. Potentially. All right. Um, I'm tempted to say you as well, Uzal, but I also know every time you've delved in. It, uh, it hasn't really taken kindly to that. Yeah, it doesn't not, like me very much. I'm not sure if it's the best to have you there. Hmm. Um. Hmm. Will we be fighting anything? Um, very likely, if this goes as I'm hoping, in a sense. I will say after I do this, it will be very unlikely that I will be useful in combat. Hmm. Yeah. Um, question. Yes. Guess that doesn't leave you many options, does it? 
what we're fighting will it be it does any... not fly that's good <laughs> <laughs> flying's cheating <laughs> oh my god uh, but no that was my question will there be spells cast at us and then also <laughs> or is anything we're fighting like super evil demon stuff it's not evil not necessarily spells from what I've experienced I just want to know and I take out the uh, um, that holy longsword thing the the holy avenger longsword I just want to know if I should be using this instead of the axe is basically what I'm asking what does the, the longsword do? The holy avenger. Uh, it does extra damage to like fiends and undead, and it also um, everyone within a ten foot radius of it has advantage on saving throws from spells. That one might be the better one. You think so? Potentially, yes. Okay, because the other option is I use my trusty axe. It hits let's harder. Use, let's let's use the long the the sword. I I let's right. see. I think that might be. A, I think it might be more better. Okay. Well, I can always change it up. If All I right. Afford. I think if Feralia is gonna be kind of running the show, it might be best to have us two, Bologna and. Ulazal. All right, let's do it. Let's see Calgary go. All right, good luck in there. Very well. Well, sit up against the wall. Prepare yourselves. Mm -hmm. Um, let me cast uh, a holy weapon on myself here first. <laughs> All right, you guys ready? I am now that I buffed myself, yes. <laughs> As you go into somebody's Whoa. dream, okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> sure, whatever you say. All right. right. Hey, it's down. If it works, it works. I'm takes just going to sit cross-legged across, right next to Eve. Okay. Takes out her spell book, yep. sits in front of everybody, reads a few things, puts her hands over everybody. Oh. And sleep. I'm not gonna make Luke say he would be the only one not here. He gets to listen to this. <laughs> I'm not gonna black him out on this. But Ralia has no idea what's going on. All right. Right. As you guys awake, there is a spotlight of white ground beneath you. Um, this endless mm -hmm. darkness all around. You can see Eve inside the center of this circle, and you can see her with her staff, with the uh, curved blade, as she's holding it from side to side, and both her feet are out, and she's just going around a circle, watching the darkness as if something lures from it. Uh, this seems like this vast emptiness of the world. Um, it seems slightly different than the uh, area that many of you experienced inside the limbo of life and death that you've experienced, but it, it has a lot of similarities to what you've experienced inside limbo. Hmm. Don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> True. This is Everyone fucking strange as shit to you, Belfina Bologna. Fucking. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Pretty weird. Bologna. All right. Everyone, uh, everyone prepare yourselves. Is my weapon still holy? I take out my weapon. All right, you guys have your That's weapons. That's already on. holy. Yep, you seem to be still holy. That's pretty cool. It worked. <laughs> you guys approach Eve. Let's go towards her. Yep. As you guys go towards Eve, um, you can see her look, and she's like, oh, "Have I finally lost my mind, or am I hallucinating a prayer of hope?" 
We... You're not either. We are trying to wake you up. Hmm. I... It is... It's really us. We are here. And we're gonna try and help you fend off the beast. I don't know if I am more concerned for your health now than my own. But if you are here to save me, you have my internal gratitude. But I do not think this is a beast any of you can take. It is something I have been fighting since the moment it arrived. Perhaps well, together. We're gonna try it together. Together. Ari, do you want to make a perception check for me? Twenty-one. You look up to the eyes in the sky, and one eye is cracked, split, and white. Hell yeah, Eve. Let's as, go. As you look up, I need everyone to roll initiative. Oh, oh, shit. Oh. 15. Terrible. 15. Yo, 17. let's go. What's your dex? Uh, better than yours for sure. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Malona, you were 15? Yeah. Okay. My dex is 18. What's yours? 14. Yeah, you're, you're going first. Yeah. yeah, I thought so. 13. Wow. We're speedy. 13, you said, Ryan? Yes. Mas. Okay. Top of the order. Out of the shadows. You see, I am uploading new music. That's what you see. Uh... Yikes. It's that Sephiroth music. Oh, no. <laughs> you see this lumbering colossus quickly come out of the darkness with these two long blades. It towers over you guys, and you see it come towards Eve. And as uh, Aerie looks over, this creature comes down. It's going to make five attacks against him. That is a natural 20. Oh no. For a 35, 25, 23, uh, 24, and uh, 22 to hit. Ah, uh, every single one hits. All right. There you go. I need you. He just rolls these before's, right? For his damage. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so for his crit, that is, uh, double that. I'm going to uncanny dodge, so keep it at the standard hit. 47 points of slashing damage. So is that 47? Is that with the crit or without? That's that's me not doubling it. Okay, so 47 oh. base. Yeah. Well, that's nice. All right. Aries going down instantly. <laughs> um, next one is... Glad you made it. <laughs> 32 points, slashing, and um, 8 necrotic. Okay. Next one. Twenty-four slashing, uh, eight necrotic. Fourth attack. Thirty-three slashing, uh, eight poison. Unconscious. Um, at that, Aerie, you wake next to Ralia, and you have one hit point. Ugh. Oh. You see the Can't next attack? Word on immediately. 
the I, next I attack goes be like a, a thing right that... towards uh, Eve. And that is going to be... Oh, fucking shit, whoa. Uh, this is ridiculous. Poor Aerie, has got his ass kicked. 18 <laughs> points. 18 points slashing. <laughs> That was, See, that was literally the lowest he, that's the lowest it could roll that's so funny plus 8 poison you after see, seeing uh, Aerie like damage obviously <laughs> it's it's like a different time period frame thing yeah. whatever. so after seeing Aerie damage coming out of that uh, Raleigh is just going to be like stand, sitting there waiting for anybody else to come out of it holding spare the dying you got it um it is now Harry's turn, who's no longer here. So now uh, Bologna's turn. As you see this massive hulking creature, just all these like shadows coming off it, and Harry just gets crushed out of existence. Oh jeez. Oh boy. All right. It's not great. Uh. I guess I'll just make. I'll just Slayer's Prey this bad boy and start shooting. Okay. Go uh, does, I guess is, I'll just start blasting. <laughs> yeah, it's holy life. So, holy so life anyway, I started blast. Actually, yeah. Ralia, can you send me back in? I'm out of spell slot. Oh. <laughs> uh, holy weapon active or no? Yes. That's neat. I'm glad that works. Glad we tested that. Uh, I'm going to be making my attacks with, uh, whatchamacallit, structure defeat here. Okay. Uh, okay, so we have 22 to hit, and 23 to hit. Neither hit. Neither hit. Okay. Yep. As the both shots go off, they go t -t -t right into the shadow creature and just do not do any damage. Yikes. I'm a hero action and see what happens. Hell yeah, you are. Hell yeah, you are. Yeah, you are. Roll something cool. Uh, 75. That does, that's not as cool. High, I know high. I mean, it's just another attack action. So go for it. Take two. You can also gain insight into de solving the conflict. This seems pretty cut and dry. <laughs> <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> I'm gonna just make some more attacks. Go for it. Uh, without the sharpshooter feet this time, because okay. I want to hit my attacks. Alright, this time we have a 25 and a 30. 30 hits? Oh. Okay. <laughs> Does that mean like a one 20, point, so. 25 does not hit? 25 does not hit. Alright. Well, we got 12 piercing, and I gotta roll the uh, the other damage here. Sure. Uh, divine Strike. One more piercing. That's hilarious. Looks like it's Prey is a d6. Six piercing. Okay. And then I got roll radiant, which is two d eight. All hit. Ooh, two eight. Sixteen radiant. Sixteen. Yep. Okay. Thank you, All right. Uh, I'm gonna run as far away as I can from that thing. <laughs> All right. Um, you can get about uh. I'd say 15 feet before you hit the edge of the darkness, and you can try to go into the darkness if you want. I don't think that's a good idea. I'm gonna just <laughs> stay okay. here. All right, you as the arrows go in, you see you can hear this these strange mutated grunts come out as those arrows enter into them and do that damage. You see your holy weapon, you know the lights shocking inside him, and you can almost see like a highlight of the insides of this creature. Um, it just seems to be almost like hollow on the inside of sorts, even though you felt the physical force. Um, actually, you, you went to run away. He's going to use his reaction uh, to try oh, uh, and stop you from running away. So he has to make an attack against you. Oh, it's going to hit. I oh, that's going to hit. That's a 29. It hits. 
As you go to run away, you see he takes his hand and grabs it on your face, and he slams you into the ground. You take an additional... Uh, additional? Oh, no. No, you take nine points of, of bludgeoning damage as you put your head into the ground. That's and, it? And there's like a crater. Why did, why did Aerie get bopped, but I only take nine? Because that was Hello? a reaction. An unarmed strike? That was an unarmed reaction. <laughs> ah, still. I mean, strength is 29. <laughs> I know someone who has a strength score that high. Also, or, it's going to use its legendary action at the end of your turn. With you well, on the ground, it has advantage. Run, boys. And it's going to take three attacks against you. See you later. <laughs> I tried. <laughs> That's one crit. I'm just going to say I go down. Can I just say that now? No, I'll see. I have 90 HP. 90? We'll see if the first one hits you then. Uh, the, <laughs> no, 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 not yet. We'll like put you down. Uh, yeah, I get. I believe. Kill me. <laughs> 41 slashing, 8 poison. For the crit. Nearly. You almost had it. Uh, or was that total? Was it 40? That was that was the whole oh. thing. That was the first oh, attack. Like, that was the first oh, attack. Oh, it's 49. Okay. Yeah, 49. Okay. Is that the first of five? On its legendary it's action? It's only three. It's only three. It's only three on its legendary action. 26 slashing, 8 poison. Okay. 29 slashing. Unconscious. You wake up, and you have 1 HP in the real world. Okay. Um, no, just mixed all those in. All right, it is now uh, Uzal's turn. As you just seen this creature wipe out from existence, Airy and Bellona. Cast Firestorm at seventh level. Go for it. <laughs> yep. Deck save. <laughs> Deck save. That Thirty. Is Twenty-five. Well, that saves, but he's still going to take 41 points of fire and radiant damage. You fucking got it. 40? 40, 41? 41. Halved, so it's just 41 total? Oh, I'm sorry. Hold on. That's wrong. It's okay. <laughs> It succeeded. Yeah. So it's going to take 20 fire and radiant damage. 20 fire, so 40 total? Uh, no. That's fire and oh, radiant. combined blended. 21. Gotcha, yeah. gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Cool. And then I'm going to use my hero action. Go for it! We'll be uh, uh, D100, please. 86. What does that do? Uh, you can take another uh, attack action. take another action, action. alright. So, let's see. What can I cast here? By the blessings of tear, you can cast another spell. Uh, uh, I feel like banishing this thing isn't going to work, but I'm going to try. I'm going to cast Banishment at 8th level, which okay. doesn't really do anything, but I'm going to do it for the flavor. Charisma save. You can see the eye pulse up in the sky, the purple one, and your uh, the purple one pulses, and the white one has like a shine to it at the same time, and as your spell happens, it fizzles out. Well, counter spell. Okay. Okay, Fall I learned. Down. All right, uh, it is now um, Eve's turn. Uh, yeah, it'll be Eve's turn. Eve is going to what does she got? None of that's really great. She's just a healer. You're such a healer. You don't do damage. You're a proper If she's player. a cleric, she has banishment, too. She does. But you just blew your banishment, and you can see her being like, I've tried that many times. Good thought, though. Well, yeah, but he burned his reaction, so I mean, if you do it in the next six seconds. <laughs> he burned his reaction pinning Bologna. Yeah, I was like, I'm pretty sure he has multiple reactions or something. 
No one's hurt, damn it. She was she was gonna heal Airy and Bologna. Everyone who got damaged <laughs> just got completely Knocked annihilated. Out. They're gone. If she's looking for damage, she has Guiding Bolt, Inflict Wounds, she has uh, Firestorm, she has... Guiding uh, Bolt! Guiding Bolt! Yeah, you can upcast, upcast the crap out of that one. That one scales really well. 26! Ninth level! Oh. <laughs> that is... 50 points of radiant damage, bitches! Let's go, Eve. We're toasting it. As you Are see you still Eve in there? crack her staff and dig into it as it starts to carve into the creature, you see this light above it start to shine. You hear this like, uh, and the light just hits down onto it. And it's very familiar, though. Uh, the colors and it's like this water that cuts through it. It seems like it's uh, through the um, deity of Mugdis cutting into the creature in front. Very cool. Mazno, it is your turn. Hit it. Uh, I'm going to rage. All right. And I'm going to run at him with my holy Avenger. He's on story. you. You don't got to run, my guy. He's in melee range. Oh, perfect. I'm just going to start yelling. Storm goes out, and I'm just going to start swinging. All right. Everybody gets a temporary hit points, then. They're all close enough to you. No, it takes a bonus action. Do I get JK. five, ten, it, 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 Your it body's not there with, anymore. It goes with my rage every oh, time. Cool. Okay. Every time the aura goes out. Thought so. Because 4 HP mm -hmm. is going to save my life. Mm -hmm. Could be. <laughs> Including the uh, the the initial rage. All right, go okay. home. Okay, uh, reckless. Go for it. You'll need it. I know. Thirty. Good lord. I think AC is twenty. All right. Twenty-five. So 26. that is 25. twenty-eight hits. Yeah. Nice. Seeing seeing what normally hits from Bellona, shocked to see her disappear, you hold nothing back as Mazo rams his axe. Uh, I'm using the sword. Sword! He rams his sword! Cuts across and slashes the creature. Okay, and that's going to be... Um, yeah. 11, 14 points of slashing damage. You got it. And then I'm going to swing our gun. Go for it. Okay. You guys are doing does good. That have, does that not have any extra radiant damage? Oh, it. Hang on. Let me look okay. at it. Um, it has 2d10 against fiends or undead. Neither. And I don't think he's. Yeah, I was like, I don't think he's either. It's unlockers. Yeah. Yeah, so it's only fiends and undead. Did not okay. think the session was going here tonight, but I am jazzed! <laughs> <laughs> Alright, swing our gun. Oh, wait, I already rolled. Uh, so it was a 27. Hits! And damage. Okay. That is uh, 15 points of slashing damage. You got it. Rawr. As you cut into it again, you see it lean down towards your level, and its mouth opens up this mm. maw, and you just hear this awful alien type scream of these sounds you've never heard before just towards you. Um, I need you to make a charisma saving throw. I'm pretty sure you can't charisma. be charmed. You can't be while you're raging, nope, right? That's that's no, that's that's, a, that's the other one. Okay. Yeah, that's just the uh, berserker thing. That's okay. berserker. Gotcha, gotcha. So go ahead. It's a charisma, I believe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, read real quick. Uh, does it seem like they were in there for a long time when Aerie came out? Like, does it seem like the same passage of time kind of thing? It, it's seconds, man. Like, they're in there yeah. barely any time. So, like, yeah. what's happening is, like, you, you have enough to turn around, and it's like, boop, boop, they're coming up. So, like, in, yeah. in there, it's like, they will have plenty of time to do stuff before you can actually contribute, which is a bummer, but... Right. 
part of the craziness. Yeah, uh, 11. 11, you now have the fear condition. As this is something that is alien to you, Mazno. As much as you're braving it out, your body is ignoring what your will is saying. You're like, no, you're not scared. You're not scared. And your body's like, bitch, what is that? <laughs> and your instincts for survival are shaking you. It is now that creature's turn. It is going to attack Ulzal, or attack uh, Mazno five times. Okay. Actually, Bring it's going it to split, split two with Eve, three with Mazno. Uh, holy Batman of bad rolls! Well, that one will hit. Uh, 24 to hit, and a 17. The other one's a natural one. And those both will oh. hit. Yeah. Those two will hit? Okay, so two hit. Yeah. Uh, that is... 29 slashing, uh, 8 poison as it comes down with this big claw attack against you and just rips across your chest. Second attack. 29 slashing. Yep, and 8 poison. Uh, okay. Next one is... Uh, 28 slashing and 8 poison. And those are the two attacks that hit you. Now against Eve. For God's sakes. Are you resistant to poison, Ryan? I am. I was halving it. That okay. boy. Because my, my cloak. 24 slashing to Eve. And 8 necrotic. Oh, that was the wrong way. Damage. And then 8 necrotic. And the second hit. That is a big one. Wait, Ulazar, are you still here? Yep. Okay, cool. I'm not gonna try and keep you up. <laughs> the only way we have a shot is if we front load all our damage into this thing. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, no, no, no. I was just 30... curious who was left. I don't expect any 36? healing to be happening. <laughs> damage, slashing, and then another eight necrotic. You see Eve just getting torn into, and she's starting to look real hurt. Um. And that will end its turn. Uh, it is now Ulzal's turn. Oh, that came up quick. Well, uh, two people are dead. Everybody's I'm, gone. <laughs> I'm rolling for divine intervention. Go for it! <laughs> this is like your cat's cradle. Oh, Didn't shit. work. Oh. 52. All right. Uh, that's it. Eve, eighth level. She's gonna blast that next one. Let's see. She's got what does more damage? 7d10 right there. 11d6. 7d10 is probably higher, right? For what's the difference? We have an 11d6 or 7d10. You probably want to go with That's the 7d10. 66 potential or 70. So there's a higher variance with the 7d10, but yeah, yeah it's up to you. We're gonna go with you. See your put the staff down, you see her with her tongue go, and out of her hand from like a little bit of moss she has, you see this insect, these glowing insects come around the shadow and insect plague, eight, plague eighth level. Damn. Ew, I didn't know that bro. Hi, hi, roller. Um, Get it, Eve, you're a cool character. That is 50 mm -hmm. points of damage. Let's see. I don't know what kind of damage that is. If this is clear, go away. Go away. I can't read it. If it's oh, my face. poison or something. Insect plague. It is. Piercing. Piercing. As all the insects are biting at this shadow creature. Okay. And half as much on the save con. He definitely have, saves it. So that is that much damage. The creature's starting to look wounded. Mm. All right. Um, that will... Oh, can she bonus action heal stuff at that level? 
like healing word and stuff, but it's not really worth upcasting because it's such a low, it's like D4. Well, I mean, she cast the, like, for bonus actions, like, she cast the spell this turn. She's a level 20 cleric. Can she... If, she, if she's a level 20 life cleric, no, I don't think so. Yeah, no, she doesn't have anything extra here. Okay. All right, that's that. Um, bu -bu -bu. Mazna, it's your turn. All right. I'm going to keep swinging. Go for it. Reckless. Indeed. Oh, he didn't swing with advantage against you. Well, that's good to know. I forgot. You're lucky. But well, you mm -hmm. won't be when he uses his legendary action. <laughs> Um, uh, what, what, what am I looking for here? Okay, that's a 29. Hits. Hit. Yeah. What? You can feel the pulse of this area, like, uh, the winds start to pick up. The shadows are almost like you're inside a vortex at this point, as those eyes are still locked on you guys in the center there. The light seems to be radiating even brighter as Eve is huffing and puffing right now. Same with you, Mazno and Ulazal. You're all looking towards this gigantic darkness of a creature of uh, standing far taller over you, crouching down as he's crushing into your allies and stabbing into you. That is 16 slashing. Okay. And then... Oh, so close. Oh. I rolled a 19 and 18. I want that 20. <laughs> you need it. You need it. I know. Okay, so 19. That's a... Uh, 31. Okay. Good shit. Dead, there, so. 31. Oh, I no, think dude. that hits. That yeah, hits. I think that hits. That hits, dude. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That would have been good damage. Um, that yeah. Yeah, when I don't use Great Weapon Master, I don't I don't actually do that much damage. Same yeah. with Sharpshooter. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, classes, man. So that's going to be uh, 15 points of slashing damage. Okay. And then I will use the Storm Aura to give everyone within 10 feet uh, besides Monster Dude, obviously, uh, four temporary hit points. Thanks. Eve is, like, super thankful. Um, you sure you don't want to do anything else before your turn's over? Cause he's yes, I would, because I meant to do it last turn and I forgot. Okay. Uh, I'm going to use my heroic action. Do it. Oh, that's not the dice I'm supposed to use. <laughs> Let's roll a d20. Okay. 38. Pretty good. Your next good attack is an auto crit. Oh. Ooh, I gotta survive. <laughs> oh, no, no, I'm sorry. That's the uh, gain 5 AC to your next turn. My bad. Ah. Oh, that's you said You said 38 or 28? Uh, 38. Yeah. Oh. No, I want you to crit. <laughs> Uh, Would have made it spicy. Now he's attacking you. Uh, Ooh, wait, that's do a I natural have, one. Do I have those AC now? Yeah. Plus five AC. Yep. So you have a plus five AC, but he is swinging for twenty-eight and thirty-one. Yeah. So I, that's why I was like, that's not gonna be helpful at all. Am I able to like use an action at some point? Because technically, I'm like my time's moving much faster. So right. I would like when Eric comes out. Would I be able to use an action? Um, yeah. I'll say at the end of this round, you can use an action. Certainly. Okay. Why not? We'll see where this goes. Uh, the he rolled super well. It rolled super well. Uh, thirty-eight slashing, eight for poison, me. and now for the second Against, hit. Yeah. Okay. Thirty-eight. Okay. Yeah. Oof, that's another really good one. 34 slashing. Okay. And 8 necrotic. 34? Uh, yes. You still up? 
Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That means we got a we got a game here. <laughs> okay. Right. It is. I it is, do have to get the bad guys. Yes. I work tomorrow. So go for it. You can go to bed. Sorry, I was gonna hard stop, and now we're in it. I, <laughs> All right. Good See night, you guys. Bye. Uh, go ahead. Uh, what do you want to do, Ralia? I want to use my hero action. Yes. Roll it. <laughs> See where it goes. Let's see what happens. 1%, okay. do it. That's a 15. 15 is regain all short rest abilities. You could probably, oh, but in short rest. I don't know what I have. Do you have short. any short One rest second. abilities? I might, I might. Can you regain like a spell slot to send somebody back in? I can oh, actually, yeah. arcane recovery. Uh, okay, so I can, uh, Combined up to level seven, none can be higher than six. Okay, it doesn't really matter. So I'll get a five and a two. I, I haven't used any twos, but sure. So I guess I can cast Dream. Uh, what level can you cast Dream at? Fit. It's a fifth level spell. Okay. Obviously, Hunter can't go back <laughs> in. <now>. Like. <laughs> I don't know. It's hard to say. It feels like will Bologna go in with one HP if I cast it on Bologna? Probably, right? <laughs> Probably. Does it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you have 100 HP or one. Well, if I can go in. Yeah. I'm at 84. I'm in. Yeah. Um. I'm gonna. I can give you if you want to go in. I'm gonna cast it on myself. I can. Obviously, I can also heal myself. All right. Well, if I'm gonna do, as you do that, I'm gonna try to help you in some way, shape, or form. Yeah. I'm just doing that for the boxes. Genius. There's nothing happening on. Down did there. did he attack uh, Eve at all? Yes, she's been hit pretty bad. She, yeah, she's like, been bad. Can I? Uh, like, I'll leave it up to you. But can I use um, Sentinel for when he attacked her? Um, next time. You can do that. Okay. I don't think I have anything great that's going to help you out. Uh, let me see. I might have something. Yeah, I, I don't think I have anything that's really going to help you. What what does well, the most healing, my guy, for a, the most amount of people? She has a seventh level healing if she survives. Mas she's gonna pop mask your wounds. Yeah, mask your wounds is great. I don't think she has mass cure wounds. Oh, she does! 78 plus 5. Yep. All right. Yeah, she's, mass cure wounds is she's super She's got great. that or heal yes. if she can live to next turn. Heal a single target. I know that, but you might be able to pop up somebody significantly. All right. Um, you going in, Ralia? I am going in. All right, Ralia is going in. Uh, Ralia, give me roll initiative. Yes, sir. Roll 12. Ralia. Ryo just goes in 15. and died. What'd you say? <laughs> 15. 15, gotcha. You're replacing Bloom. Yep. Um, bring in her. Bring in her heavy hair. Yeah, tag in, tag out. She yeah, does not appear just yet. Terrible spell, uh, spell slots. As you're all standing there, uh, the creature's going to take its five attacks against, let's see, it's going to do uh, three on Eve. Actually, one on Ulazol, two on Mosno, two on Eve. Okay. All right. When he when he hits Ulazol, I want to hit him back with Sentinel. You got it. Uh, he's not gonna hit Ulazol. That's a seventeen. Yeah, Ooh. that's a miss, bro. That's a miss. That's Dang, that's a bad boy. roll. Wow. That a natural oh, that's one. That's a natural yeah. one on Eve. He does not hit. Yeah. Wow. That wow. is a twenty-eight on on uh, Mosno. Yeah, that hits. And that is a 26 on Mosno. Oh, yeah. And then I also... Do it back. Rolled a, um, a 26 against him. Hits! Oh, he found his AC, boys. <laughs> oh, yeah. nice. Uh, so that's going to be 20 points of slashing. Nice. As you carve into it, you, you're, you have all these cuts on you, and you're not bleeding like normal. It's just like this endless burning pain around you guys as you're cutting into the creature. Uh, 
It's overwhelming. It goes to stab at Ulzal. He puts up a shield. Stops with the shield. Puts it, pushes it off. He goes to cut at Eve. She takes her uh, curved staff sword and pushes the parries the attack away. Mods now, as you then take that opportunity to carve into him, it locks eyes with you and takes both of its uh, claws and stabs them into you. Uh, so the first attack is going to hurt. It is 37 points of slashing. For, for me? Yep, for Mosnell. 37 points of slashing plus... Um, 37. Uh, 8 points necrotic. Okay. And then this is... 8 necrotic. Uh, oh, jeez. 28 points slashing and 8 poison. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, that'll end its turn. It is now, uh, who has a higher dex, Ralia or Ulazal? I have, I have zero. fourteen. Oh, ten. Okay, Plus it zero. is Ulazal, Ulazal. Your turn. Uh, I'm casting Flame Strike at sixth level. Go for it. That's a dex save for him. You got it. That is a twenty-three. That saves, but he is still going to take, so total is 38, so I believe that is 19 uh, radiant and fire damage. Zach, just so you know, uh, you choose which damage it is. It's radiant good. damage. You got it. Are you sure? <laughs> yeah, I'm reading it right now. Okay. Choose damage type, fire, radiant. At the end of your turn, he's going to use one of his legendary actions, and he's going to hit the ground. The entire ground's going to shake and crack forward. I need everybody to make um, dexterity saving throws. I am so good at this. Ooh, Ooh, five. You haven't appeared yet. Uh, five. Oh, okay. You are knocked prone. 27. You're not there. <laughs> <laughs> you feel like you would have made that. You have one hit point, like, Something's coughing up blood on. in reality, and you're like, oh, I dodged that shit. <laughs> and, like, you're hallucinating. Uh, 17. 17. Uh, you are knocked prone. Oh, and I gotta do for Eve as well. Damn it. Uh, she saves, actually. Good for fucking her. That's 22. All right. Um, so that's that. That's that. It is now... Ralia, you appear inside this... Whirlwind of blackness, these strange discolored eyes in the sky, the shadowy creature above Ulazal, Eve, and Maznel. Um, you can see two of your comrades on the ground, Eve standing up to this thing, and all of them bleeding and damaged. What do you do? Mm. So, uh, it doesn't appear undead to me, right? It does not. Uh, let's just see what happens. I'm just going to try to cast Hypnotic Pattern. So make a Wisdom Interesting. Uh, saving throw. Uh, okay. That is a natural 20. <laughs> well, that's it. Uh, yeah, that's all I can do then. Okay. I will, am I like right next want. to it? Or? Oh yeah, it is like on top of you. Okay. How much room is there around here? Not much. Not about 15 much. feet to get to the edge. The whole thing is uh, basically a 30-foot circumference in this circle. Diameter. Okay. Um, I don't know if this is an action. Let me read it real quick. Yeah, go for it. The thing is looking hurt. Well, so, cool. I as the uh, caster of the spell can try to manipulate the dream. It doesn't say it's an action. I agree. You I, can try. Uh, so, I would assume that it would probably go against the save, which is a wisdom 18 again. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just going to try to, like, elongate the area to make it really far away from us. Mm -hmm. As you attempt to do this, you can feel this presence and as you're trying to push out, you can feel you're no longer, like, in control. This is no longer your spell at this point where right. you're at. And you can feel that just those eyes in the sky peering down at you. Um, okay. All right. So that is 
your move. It is now Eve's move. She is going to cast at seventh level. Where are you? Mass, mass healing cure word, right? That's the one. No, mass, mass cure wounds. wounds. Mass cure wounds. Somewhere around here. Do you think it'd be alphabetical? Why is it not? It should be. Where is it? In seventh level. Oh, I see cure wounds. Uh oh, she might not have. She does not have mass cure wounds prepared. Uh, That's uh, weird. She does today. She might. Let me go look. Uh, <laughs> she's a life cleric. There's no way she doesn't have it, and I do. I don't know. I if do. She is a uh, life cleric. It's mass cure wounds. Yep. Oh, wait. Let's, let's go back. I mean, even Bologna has it. So, I would assume. It's, it's a uh, it's a sixth level spell or a fifth level spell rather. Yep. Let me look. Mass cure wounds. Yep. Fifth level. Okay. Uh, she would probably use that over a healing word yeah. because she's knowledgeable and experienced and <laughs> understands that that's just a better spell. I don't need to so hear this. Better. I'm hearing a lot of backseat gaming is what I'm hearing right now. I'm just talking about Eve's knowledge and experience. I bet you are, you sure. I am. Oh, God damn it. Where is the prepared spells? This is a super annoying. Prepared spells. Go down. Unprepare. She's still fresh off the Orlith fight, I see. Uh, where are you? Mass cure wounds. There it is. Mass cure wounds. No. Mass healing word? No. Cure no. Mass, mass cure wounds. God damn it. All right, here we go. She got it. 21 points of healing to everybody here. Neat. All right. It is now... Um, uh, Mosnell's turn. Oh, no. He's going to take his legendary action to attack... Uh, Whoa, what happened? Mosno three times. Did you hear me, Mosno, for your heal? Uh, yeah, hang on. Okay, 21 heal happens. for you. I'm using my phone because... I... It's fine. Uh, Stuff. And it has advantage against you because you're reckless. It didn't really help. But all three are going to hit. That's going to be like 28, 27, 28. Mm -hmm. uh, that is what is your AC, Brian? Probably like 16. 16. Yeah. Oh, wow. Oh, he's going to be hitting all the Same. Barbarians. That is 30 points slashing. Hang on. Okay, I'm going to down so I don't forget it. damage written down when you're ready for whenever. Um, yep, I'm ready. Okay, it is... Actually, I can just do all of this slashing together. That is... Oh, maybe if I could do math, that would be... Eighty-one slashing for the three attacks. Hang on. Eighty-one slashing? Yep. Sixteen poison. Okay. Okay. Eight necrotic. Okay. Hell yeah, I'm on us all. <laughs> now it's your He's turn. So beefy. What a beast. As you just <laughs> go and strike back against him as these claws are digging in and into you, the darkness surrounding you. Um, give me a charisma saving throw. Okay. 16. You start to hear strange whispers inside your head. It is your turn. Oh, boy. 
I don't like the sound of that. Okay. All right, since I'm afraid of him, I have disadvantage, right? Yeah. Well, I'll attack recklessly to get even it out. Get after it. It's looking rough. Hey, okay, it's a 24. Misses. You're, oh. As your fear is overcoming you, you see it just black, just grab your blade and throw it back. Okay. All these, like, this constant burning shadow is coming off it. What was that? Wait, isn't his next hit a crit? No, mm -hmm. it was the AC. No, that was the AC. It's, nope. uh, damn. Okay. Uh, this one is better. It is... Hang on. A 28. Hits! Okay. Finding a breath of confidence, hearing all these crazy voices, you think about saving your friend Eve, and you thrust the sword back into the creature over you. Uh, <laughs> that's going to be a 13 slashing. You got it. And then I'll just use Storm... Spilling out. Storm Aura. Dope. To get four temporary hit points for everybody. Um, Mosnel looks like he's on his last legs. Sitting there, probably... When I close, like, uh, blood everywhere. It is now the its turn. You see it reel back, and you just see this, and this purple flame just explodes outward towards all of you. I need you to make deck saving throws. Okay. It doesn't happen to be a spell, does it? It is definitely not a spell. <laughs> okay, because if it was a spell, everyone would have advantage. 15. 19. Uh, 19. In this circumstance, all of you save. Half damage. Uh, let's see if it matters. Do barbarians get evasion? Or is it not a thing? <laughs> no. <Yeah. laughs> well, that was, that was the thing with uh, my, my half monk, half barbarian. Mm -hmm. He has evasion. That's nutty. Because, because monks. So he because gets rage and evade, yeah. So he gets a. That's that's why I, it was an awesome idea because he gets rage and evasion. It's fucking great. And he doesn't need to concentrate on spells, so he can still do <laughs> cool, useful things, but also not need to. But you're melee, so you have to use your fists. Right. Of fury. Yeah. Fifty-three he points <laughs> fire damage. Is that fifty-three oh, yeah. total? Yes. Ignores resistance. Yep. Oh, that's, have to. That's all she wrote. Half to twenty-six. Yep. Uh, yeah, twenty-six. Are you down? You don't have any abilities that get you back up once you hit zero. I do. That's what I wanted to check for. I I knew I was like I'm probably gonna go down at some point, but I can get back up. Yeah, you can. <laughs> As the flames burn through all of you inside here, you see Eve really heaving. This is close. All right, I save. I'm at one hit point. You're at Let's one go. hit point. Mazno puts the sword back up. He's pushing up. You have first degree burns all over you, Mazno. One eye is swollen shut. Your beard is still on fire. The flames are still where you guys are. They haven't gone out yet. Um, that's gonna bring up Ulazal's turn. Or Ralia? No, yeah, Ulazal. Ulazal has the better decks. So I am casting Flame Strike at fifth level. Go for it. Deck save. Sure. Uh, nineteen. Save. So you take twenty-three radiant damage. Half or no? That was halved. Okay. It's looking real rough. <laughs> As you see the light starting to pierce through the shadows, you see this, these horrible noises coming out again, very alien in nature. Uh, all right, that is now Ralia's turn. I don't have a lot of good options, to be honest. <laughs> Just uh, the Why the fuck did I come in here again? <laughs> <laughs> don't do a lot of, I don't have a lot of modifiers on, my, on hit, though. That's the problem. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, 
Okay, I'm going to, I'm going to try hypnotic pattern again. Go for it. Wisdom save. Uh, twenty-four. Oh my gosh! Yeah, that saves. No effect. <laughs> As Raleigh again tries to spell, and she looks over, she's like, "Fuck." <laughs> <laughs> Eve. She is going to cast a. How many seventh levels does she have? Another one, baby! Do it. Defeat your demons, Eve. <laughs> she does a, uh, what is it? Mass, mass oh, cure she's wounds. Us. What's that? Yeah, I mean, she could mass cure wounds. What else she got in here? She does a damage spell she could try. She has another insect plague she could do, guiding bolt. How weak does this thing look? Yeah, I mean, Insect Plague is probably the best bet because it's guaranteed damage. You guys are on the fucking knife right now! <laughs> Everyone's That's, like one shot away. Let's do it's it! It's her demons, man. She's just gotta kill the thing. Eve is kill rolling for thing. it, so it's a con save. Oh, oh it, that it saves, saves survives. <laughs> Alright. She deals... 31 points halved, so that would be 15. 15. 15. Oh. The insects glow again, you see Eve. Uh, uh, oh, oh, completely out of breath at this point. She is looking really, really rough. Um, it is going to use its legendary action to attack Eve three times. All three hit. Eve is sentinel. Oh, go for it. Eve is definitely better. It's though. not gonna. It's not gonna stop her from getting hit, but yeah, that's not gonna hit. No, doesn't hit. Twenty. Does 20. not hit. As you're tired and you you go put your sword up the block and you see it just goes right through your sword right through Eve and you see her <laughs> hit the ground. She is currently unconscious. Mazno, it is your turn. Okay. I am going to swing at the motherfucker. Go for it. <laughs> now, wait, wait. Now is the time to crit, Mazno. Now is the Oh, you can make a check. Make a check to see if you still have disadvantage, right? For your fear. You can roll every turn to see if you still right. have fear. Okay. That's a charisma saving throw. Um, that is pretty good, actually. Uh, 18. It leaves you. You are no longer <gasps> frightened by it. Yes. Quit him. <laughs> Reckless. <laughs> Do it now. <laughs> Need those brutal crits. This would be the clutchest shit in the world. Come on. God damn it. 24. 24 does not hit the first attack. With any energy you try and slash at it, it just you can't get enough strength in your arm to even pierce into the darkness. Second attack. Okay. Second attack. That is a 28. Hits. And okay, that is 15 points of slashing damage. And another storm aura goes out. Oh. Four, four temporary hit points. For Thank the you. Eve is still on the ground, but she has those hit points. Whoa! It is, she dies in the game. Does she die in real life? It is its turn. Top of the order. It is going to mm -hmm. take... Um, He's going to try to take one, two attacks against Mazno. He wants to make sure you're down. So we'll see. Actually, we'll just, for one attack against Mazno first. That is a uh, 21. So that's going to hit. That is low roll, though. Ooh. Oh, my God. Do math read. 16 points slashing. I'm down. And Mazno goes down once again. 
And do you Wait. do it? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you do the roll again now? Yeah. Yes. All right, DC so you goes get up, back up. But... DC goes up. And Wait, what's my constitution? Should be good. Uh Uh whew, skin of my teeth. We're good. All right. Yes. It's going to take the other 16. attacks against Ulzol and Ralia. Two against Ralia. Oh, those are brutal Ralia. That is like 30, 34 and 23. Yeah. All okay. right. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on to your butt, Ralia. Uh, She's not going to have a butt after it gets kicked <laughs> by this monster. First one is... Uh, 30 points slashing, 8 poison. Yikes. Second attack. Did you use your uh, reaction, Muslim? Yeah. yeah. Well, it's been past your turn. You can use your reaction again. It's been past my turn. Oh, yeah, I'll do that then. You got it back. Sentinel! Sentinel. Kill, Kill it. <laughs> Kill it! This is it against Ralia. Attack. 24 slashing, 8 necrotic. Yeah, I'm done. Bounces back to reality, Ralia. Oozle, two attacks against you. 26 from Hits! Me. Go ahead! Swing for the yeah. fences, Mosnell! Ooh, yeah. Okay, um, that's gonna be 19 points of slashing. <laughs> oh shit! Oh, it's looking real bad as Raleigh gets smacked out of existence. You see Mazno get up again. And just crunch. You actually feel it go into it. And you see the thing up in the air. Barely standing, it attacks Ulazol. Four. Uh, 19 slashing. Oh, uh, hold on. What's the to hit there, pal? <laughs> oh, you're right. I didn't do the. T you're, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. I forgot to roll. Uh, thank you. Important. <laughs> um, one's a natural one. You lucky little bitch. And then one's a thirty. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. It's a lot. Thirty one. <laughs> so I'll reroll the damage. So that might be. That's so funny. Twenty-eight points slashing, eight necrotic. So that's thirty-six total. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uzo. So what? Your turn. Hit it with a dex thing. Anything. <laughs> Hit it. <laughs> Kill it. <laughs> God. <laughs> I need more save spells that do damage. I think. I'm going to have to, I have to Guiding Bolt. Go for it. All right, I'm casting Guiding Bolt at fourth level. Okay. 26. Roll damage as Ulazol shoots a Guiding Bolt. Huh? 32 damage. Radio How damage. do you want to do oh. this? Yes. <laughs> oh boy. <gasps> oh! He's in oh. my guiding bolt! Oh my god! <laughs> Gather the radiant energy in my hand and I just toast this thing right through its head. You see, the, as the brilliant light of tear goes into it, the shadows <laughs> disperse. And as it does, you <gasps> come up and you see, as you all come back into the world, you see Eve <gasps> sit up. And that's oh. where we'll end tonight's session. Yo, we did it! Who we finally it? brought you back! Oh, oh, we did it! After all this time. Wow, oh, wrong, wrong crew, guys. Wrong crew. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yeah. When we come back, I'm like, heal me, heal me, please. <laughs> <laughs> the Chosen are so good, we're picking up the other crew's slack. Oh my goodness, dude. Uh, <laughs> the, other, the other crew is helping <gasps> all of us unknowingly. <laughs> 
currently dismantling the whole slave empire in trade. Oh, it's fine. Well, True, well, they're not currently dismantling anything so, besides. Well, they're, they're just they're just in it, so you know. But they will be doing.